Getting lost in the music is great, except if you're driving. Nissan's available Intelligent Safety Shield technologies could help you avoid bad drivers. Hurry into your local Nissan store and get great offers during the Safety Today event. Or shop ChooseNissan.com today. Now, back to the music. Blog Talk Radio. Here we go. This is True Capitalist Radio. True Capitalist Radio. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. The badass of business. Give him capitalism or give him death. That's it. Period. Broadcasting from his Skyline Office Studios in beautiful downtown Austin, Texas. You sound fruitier than a box of Fruit Loops, for Christ's sake. And now, he'll take it from here. Your host, the prognosticator of prognosticators... The man they call Ghost. <laughs> Woo! What's going on, folks? And thank you for tuning in with me to another spontaneous, random Sunday edition, but a very important edition, of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And of course, folks, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. This is the anti-Mother's Day edition of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast, folks. And if you were unaware... Uh, you know, since I took a four to almost five year hiatus from doing this show on the internet, I used to somewhat do this, and I would say almost on an annual basis. Every damn Mother's Day, I would, you know, uh, go ahead and schedule a show, you know, on a Mother's Day because I don't think that mothers deserve any kind of credit at this point in time. First of all, and secondly. Uh, I think that the whole idea, the whole concept of a goddamn Mother's Day is ridiculous, all right? Now, before I get into that, folks, all right, I want to go ahead and start drinking, all right? I'm serious. I mean, this is a, this calls for drinking. It's a somber day today. You can feel all the false energy and, you know, all the false confidence and all, all this crap in the air because, oh, look, it's mama. And I am mama. I mean, come on, man. You know, I read here, what was it? I think I read here today, I forgot what the source was. Almost $200 on average is spent on my when it comes to Mother's Day. Can you believe this crap? And what does Dad get on Father's Day? A freaking tie for about, if he's lucky, 10 bucks, 15 bucks for Christ's sake. I mean, just screw the, the whole materialistic aspect of this whole ridiculous supposed holiday. There shouldn't be a holiday for freaking Mother's Day. I mean, I've said this time and time and time again, all right? And I'm going to say it again right now, all right? Hey, mothers, all right, while you're patting yourself on the back and you got all these people hypnotized thinking that, you know, you deserve some kind of materialistic widget because you happen to shit out a few kids, for Christ's sake, hey, woman, that's what you're supposed to do. Do you understand me? I mean, let's be honest, folks. Just be honest for a little bit with yourself. And before I get into this, I, look, before I start describing this, I better start, you know, calming my ass down. As you can see, I'm already a little high strung this early in the broadcast, folks. This is not some day that I, you know, kick back my shoes and, you know, uh, you know, uh, I enjoy, for Christ's sake. I can feel the false positivity, the false self-esteem. It's in the air, for Christ's sake. I can feel it. So, what I am deciding to do is I'm going to go ahead, and this doesn't call for Johnny Walker Blue Label. Ah, no. You mothers, you don't get Johnny Walker Blue Label now, all right? I, I'm not giving you that. You don't deserve it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and try to get what I usually get. And, folks, if you folks don't know, I, I actually have a uh, nostalgic fondness for uh, Miller High Life, folks, and... Uh, if you've been listening to me for a long time, you folks know why it was my father's favorite beer. Uh, he was a hard-working, blue-collar man. Uh, this man would literally come home 
crack open a few of these for Christ's sake and literally pass out. I mean, it's literally what this man did for a long period of time. And, you know, you little ghost over here, he would see the old man passed out. You know, he'd admire the old man because the old man was, you know, he was a tough son of a bitch. Uh, you know, he'd get one of these damn beers, you know, he'd get one of these cans for Christ's sake. And, look, I still get the cans that he would get. Uh, it was the, uh, the the pint size, I guess 16-ounce, you know, cans. Uh, you know, a little ghost, you know, let me see what Dad's drinking over here. He'll cracks open the beer. Oh, yeah, it always sounds, it sounds the same every time, baby. All right, now, uh, I take a sip out of it, of course, when I was a little kid and be like, whoa, what the hell is it? What the hell is this crap? I mean, any, any kid that's tasted some beer, you know, your pal is not prepared for beer. I'm telling you this right now. And if it is, then you've been drinking way too much as a freaking teenager, all right? Good God. I mean, y'all should be, you know, uh, you know, messing around with what was it, Boone's Farm or whatever the hell you kids drink now. I don't know what the hell you did. You had wine coolers or whatever the hell you people drink. Let me sit here drinking beer. If you're drinking beer and knocking them back at like a teenager, for Christ's sake, you should. I mean, some, you've had too much experience with alcohol, in my personal opinion. All right. Now with that said. Let me go ahead and start pouring, and let's get to the broadcast, folks. I don't mean to go down to ghost memory lane and be nostalgic over here, but uh, it's a somber moment, folks. You know, so uh, these these mothers, these so-called mothers out here in America, they're not getting Johnny Walker today, boy. They're getting what uh, the Mexicans call out here in Texas, and I don't know if they call them out there in California, but uh, they call uh, these things wetas. You know what I'm saying? I'm serious. I'm not joking. Anyway, folks, uh, let me go ahead and pour this beer in here. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, let me let go ahead and let that uh, foam out here for a second. But I'm telling you this right now, all right? Mothers that are listening in, and, and listen, if you're listening in, please spread the word like wildfire that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house, and this is an anti-Mother's Day edition of the True Capitalist Radio Show, okay? I need you to spread it around like wildfire, all right? We got all kinds of little buttons right next to the player in front of you right there, all kinds of Facebook like buttons and retweet this buttons and social media buttons. Use and abuse those buttons, baby, and spread it around like wildfire that we are in effect in the house, for Christ's sake. We're live right now, baby, all right? Seriously, whoever's listening to my voice right now, we are live. And we are going to go ahead and uh, take some calls in here in the next few, uh, well, give, give me about 20 or 30 minutes. 516-453-9903. We got a lot of discussion to talk about. We got a lot of things to talk about out here on this anti-Mother's Day edition. All right, but let me pour some more beer here. Hold on. All right, here we go. We're, we're, we're pouring beer here. I mean, look. I have to drink, all right, because I know I'm going to get a little off keister. I might get a little angry, you know, I might start screaming a little bit, get a little wild or something. But look, this needs to be said, okay? And look, before I get too wild or anything, what I'm going to do is I'm going to consume a couple of alcoholic beverages of what my old man used to drink, all right, high life. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. I'm, I'm just gonna chug these things. I'm gonna, I'm gonna chug them like you know some obnoxious wrestler thinking he's a badass. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? I'm serious. Let me go ahead. Cheers to everybody out there who's just a human being and is a capitalist and uh, who's working, who's paying taxes. Uh, cheers to you. You people need more of a pat on the back than somebody who shits out a kid. And this goes for Father's Day, too. What, we're supposed to congratulate to you because you let, uh, you you ejaculated in some stupid, useless hole? I mean, give me a freaking break, man. I mean, look, you know what makes you a mother? You know what makes you a father? The product of your children, all right? And how they look at you and how they are in life. And I hate to, you know, bring Donald Trump in this conversation, but look at that man's children, all right? I mean, that's a product of who that man is and who he was to his children. All right? I mean, these are good people, you know? I mean, that's really what should be judged as it relates to a mother, a father. But you see, nobody's really parenting anymore. And, of course, folks, the product is in the young people in today's America. 
I mean, just take a look at how they're falling hook, line, and sinker with this social justice warrior hysteria. You know, the ability to pout and cry so that they get attention and some kind of self-value, for Christ's sake, because they know that doing anything else requires work. You know, I mean, this is, this is a product of the parenting out here. You know, the lack of intellectual curiosity, the, the lack of attention on a lot of these children. All right. I mean, the, the, just the uh, uh, just just talk to them. I don't even need to describe it. These aren't the children of like 25, 30 years ago. And even those brats, you know, look at what they turned out to be with all due respect, folks. I mean, I know that maybe all are uh, Generation X and millennials or whatever. But with all due respect, you people are idiots. All right. I'm sorry. I, I mean, I always say I don't mean to pigeonhole people because I know that there are exceptions to the rule. But as I've always stated before, and I will say it again, a group is defined by its majority. And by God, I don't know if you folks have been following me on Twitter, and if you haven't done so, Politics Ghost is the name to follow. All one word, no underscores. Politics Ghost. I, I, I tweeted a damn uh, video about somebody who was describing how the Generation Xers and the uh, Millennials are completely getting screwed by the baby boomers, folks, okay? And we're going to talk about all that here in a second. And I'm, I'm getting a little off keister already, all right? So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm just going to, you know, you know, just, you know, just take a couple of breaths. I've got the freaking beer on. I, I got it in glass here. I love drinking beer in a glass. Cheers to the capitalist army. Cheers to the capitalists, the workers, and the taxpayers throughout the world. Cheers, baby. You deserve the pat on the back today. Cheers. Ugh. I'm telling you, you're going to hear a lot of that, unfortunately, in this episode, folks. All right, Ms. Maverick, let me go ahead and double chug it. Ugh. I'm telling you, I want to hurry up and finish this pint and break out another one because the things I'm going to talk about today are going to get me... A little upset, to say the least, all right? And I don't care how you feel about it, to be honest with you. I don't, you know, I'm sick and tired of people, oh, I'm triggered, oh, I'm upset, oh, I'm offended. Shove it up your ass, all right? That's not what free speech is about. You understand that free speech means that you're going to have to accept things that hurt your stupid little delicate fruit bowl feelings. You understand this, right? If you don't, well, then maybe you need to go to yourself right now. You know, if you happen to have a mirror, look at yourself in the mirror and spit in your face. Spit in your own goddamn stupid, ridiculous, mindless, borderline psychotic mental midget face. Spit in your damn face. Jesus Christ, you people make me want to puke. Anyway, you see what I'm saying, folks? I got to calm down. I got to... I just got to keep drinking, man. That's all I got to do. I'm sorry, folks. This is the anti-Mother's Day edition. And once again, folks, I am not honoring mothers today because, folks, anything can be a mother. Do you understand this, right? I mean, you ever heard the terminology? They're multiplying like rabbits. That's because rabbits become mothers like all, so frequently. I mean, they, they, they have a freaking breeding problem at some point if you don't, you know, make pelts out of these sons of bitches. You understand? I'm serious. I mean, uh, you know, anything's a mother, you know? Anything that lays eggs, that fertilizes and hatches into it, uh, a replication of itself as a freaking mother. I mean, give me a break. Jesus Christ. Good Lord. I mean, uh, I mean, it just makes me sick, you know? I mean, everybody's honoring this. I mean, do you understand that the majority of mothers today... Now, I'm not saying that mothers were always bad and they were just disgusting people. Obviously not, folks. I mean, you know, there's been mothers when they were the matriarch of the family and basically kept the family together amidst any kind of struggle, whether it be economic war, whether it be turbulent times, uh, you know, family dr dramatic episodes, whatever the case might be, they were the ones that kept everything together because that was their household. And these feminists, they like to go over here and claim that 
oh well, uh, that's oppression. They, they were they, they were forced to sit there and, and they were forced to just go and, and look at soap operas all day and make sure that the that the kitchen was clean and they meh meh meh. Jesus Christ! Now look at you, ladies, huh? And feminism got you everything you wanted. You know now. You are the majority of the workforce, all right? I think if if you're not pushing 60%, you're over it of the workforce, ladies, all right? Now you ladies are single mothers out here. You think that you're independent, baby. You're like, yeah, baby, I'm independent. You understand what I'm saying? I got myself four or five kids, baby, but I got, I got child support from each and every one of them motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? I mean, one of them motherfucking daddy, he got, he got, he got a good, he got a good, good job in this motherfucker. This motherfucker give me about fifteen hundred, two thousand a month. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm serious, folks. Then they go out and they get a job, and this is why you're seeing a lot of these uh, in today's Obama's America. You're seeing a lot of these women who just seem to be, you know, churning out children, and they're single, and you know, they're having, you know, uh, coach purses and uh, Louis Vuitton bags and. Uh, you know, the designer garbage, their hair is always did. Their nails are always done. I've never seen so many hair salons and nail places. I mean, there's all kinds of stupid, dumb beauty crap popping up all over Austin, Texas, for Christ's sake. And I'm sure it's the same way all over the goddamn country. You want to know why? Because they are the majority of the workforce at this point in time, and that's fine. But now you want to be the majority of the workforce, and you want to take care of the family, and then you take a look at the products that are being produced at this point in time, these children, these kids. I mean, look at them, for Christ's sake. Look what you've done to them. And I'm talking to you single mothers especially. Look at what you've done to them, for Christ's sake. We wonder why they look like they just popped out of the anal passage of freaking uh, Greg Luganus, you know, post-AIDS in most cases. I mean, we wonder why. We wonder why. I mean, who is, uh, especially a child that's a, a, a male, being raised by a single mother? All right? Now, look, I'm not lumping all single mothers together. I know that there's some single mother capitalists. They understand that whatever uh, relationship that conceived this poor bastard uh, is, you know, uh, her, their mistake and they're paying for it, and they're trying to be a good mother, and trying. Uh, well, I, I understand that there are those people, but for the most part, folks, a group is defined by its majority. In this case, once again, the majority of these single mothers are just shitting out children because it's a financial incentive to do so. Our current liberal regime, that has been in power since 2008, and let me tell you, the Republicans, outside of the Trump revolution and the capitalist revolution. Uh, both parties were the same. That's why nothing has gotten done and things have gotten progressively worse and worse for, uh, for us all. all right? But they've made it a financially incentive. They made, they've motivated people to go and just shit out children from sh different fathers. There's entitlements that will take care of them. And, you know, why do you think that, in my opinion, you know, I know uh, there was a radio host that took flack for this, but in my opinion, I think that it also incentivizes these mothers to make sure to find ailments and sicknesses and make sure their kids are sick so that not only if they happen to be falling into the food stamp and the welfare category, they can also dip into the SSI money, disability money. Uh, you know, they've got the child tax credit. Uh, you know, I mean, they, they, this is a financial incentive. You understand this? All right. Meanwhile, you would think that all that money and all, all that benefits would help a, a woman, a single woman, raise a proper family. And look, folks, the product, just look at the goddamn product, man. All right, just look at what's going on here to our children. They are socially warped, all right? They can't communicate. Their attention spans are ridiculous, for Christ's sake. Have you ever talked to one, for Christ's sake? Try to give them a sentence that's more than about uh, ten words and see if, if they can. Just, just tell them a sentence and then just say, can you repeat what I just said to you back? And they're going to be like, uh, uh, no, what was that again? What? 
I'm telling you this right now. Now, I'm not blaming the children. I'm blaming the parents or parents. You understand? We wonder why these children are getting more smaller. Do you remember when children were raised up? I mean, look, I've been around for a good amount of years, folks, okay? And I, I don't remember, you know, children being so small. Uh, in my opinion, they're malnourished. Uh, you know, I, I see a lot of kids with casts. Uh, like, they, 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 their bones are easily broken, so on and so forth, folks. Let me tell you what these single mothers are doing, okay? On top of all the uh, money that they're getting from, uh, and look, what I just described earlier is just the tip of the iceberg of what these goddamn single mothers get. I mean, like I said, child support, welfare, uh, food stamps. Uh, they could get housing uh, vouchers. They can get a housing assistance. Uh, they can, uh, uh, gee, you name it, they can get it. And on top of that, they get a tax credit. Uh, you know, at the end of the year. That's why at the end of the year, you got some of these skankosauruses getting like 15 grand. You know, I'm telling you, they, you know, these, these bimbos don't even work. They're getting like 15 grand. And literally, that's what retailers have to freaking market to at this point in time just to stay alive and make a profit during this point in time. I'm serious. It's pathetic. It's disgusting. But on top of that, folks, all right, like I was alluding to earlier, if their children is are sick, all right, and the more sick they are, the more they're going to get from SSI and Medicaid and Medicare. And moreover, folks, how they're feeding their children. You would think that the, all that money they were getting, their children would be well fed, uh, you know, fed with the proper nourished meals, you know, something, right? No, absolutely not. You know what a lot of these single mothers are doing, folks? They are they are utilizing the free lunch and the free breakfast at school to feed and suffice their children's nourishment, folks. All right, I'm I kid you not. I kid you not, folks. All right, this is what these single mothers are doing. They are they're sending their kids off to school. All right, the public education system that's dumbing them down to begin with. They send them off to school. They, they they make sure to get them early for breakfast. They get a breakfast in them, right, which I don't – I mean, Jesus Christ, just, I don't even want to talk about cafeteria food. But if you were in public education, just remember it. I hear it's about 20,000 times worse now, all right? Anyway, uh, they get a breakfast in them, for Christ's sake, which, in my opinion, probably – it doesn't properly nourish a growing child at all, all right? Then they go to lunch, and, you know, you've seen what school lunches are, for Christ's sake. In my opinion, they look like a nuclear waste dump, you know, and they just, you know, whatever's left. I mean, just it's just garbage. And believe it or not, folks, uh, in many schools, depending on the school, from what I understand, uh, some of these schools can actually have after-school, like, programs or care or something of that nature, and they actually feed these kids a snack during that particular time while mommy's at happy hour and, you know, on her way back to pick up the kid or whatever the crap might be. I'm not kidding you around, folks. I mean, I make observations. I look at things. I'm not stupid, all right? I mean, and, and that's why I like Donald Trump. He's not a stupid man either. All right? We're capitalists. When you're a capitalist, you observe things. You observe everything. You analyze everything. You try to apply things. You try to look for nuances, patterns, so on and so forth, folks. And let me tell you something right now. What I just described to you is really what's happening in today's America when it comes to these freaking single mothers. I mean, they're literally sending their kids to public school so that they can get fed. And, and where's the money going from all that garbage, especially child support, all right? Where's all that money going? Look at all the hair salons. Go, go right now. Uh, you're on the Internet, for Christ's sake. You've got local Google search, for Christ's sake. Do it on your phone. Count how many goddamn uh, freaking hair salons and nail salons and beauty salons and whatever else, a anything related to the beauty industry, makeup stores, uh, you know, female uh, clothing stores. Just count how many there are in your local market, for Christ's sake. And I'm telling you this, the reason that is, is because not only are the women the majority of the working place, I mean, the, 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 the employment market, the labor market, I should say, excuse me, uh, they're the ones consuming most of the product out here, all right? I mean, they're the ones getting all the money. I mean, they're shitting out children. You know, uh, they're going to go and get all this benefits that I just described to you and child support, for Christ's sake. That's why I feel bad for men right now. 
I mean, if you're a successful chap in America and you're a good earner, I mean, you, Jesus Christ, you are a target for these devious, disgusting, filthy whores, with all due respect to those that aren't, all right? And that's why I tell the gentlemen that listen to me, I got a lot of young gentlemen who listen, look, do not fall for Broad's looks. I'm telling you this right now, all right? Especially if you've got something financially beneficial to yourself, all right? Especially if you... If you're known to have had a lot of money, or you came into a lot of money, or you got a business, or you inherited, whatever it is, do not fall for these Skankasaurus' looks. Why do you think they look like that? All right? Why do you think they, well, they're they trying to capture you? Why do you think the goddamn makeup industry is going through up the ass? All right? I mean, not to mention, they're one of the most successful YouTubers, even though I hate YouTubers. One of the most the, the most successful YouTubers out there, these freaking makeup people that, you know, can turn themselves into different look and face features every single makeup job. It's pathetic. All right? how, how do you think they they got all these apparel stores and, you know, purse stores and all this other crap, man? Jesus Christ. Makes me it makes me sick. It it, it just makes me sick. And you see what, we're supposed to pat mothers on the ass today because of this crap? I don't get it. I don't get it, and I don't want to get it, to be honest with you. Because what mothers should be judged upon today, if they want to be judged, is the product of their goddamn egg and seed. All right? And if you are one of these dumb skankasauruses that got conned by some idiot in a leather jacket with slick back hair, chewing on a toothpick and flipping a goddamn nickel... You thought he looked hot, for Christ's sake. You decided to go and, you know, do whatever whatever this idiot wanted, you know, and you got banged in back of a goddamn movie theater or whatever the hell happened to you. You got knocked up, and then out came this kid, and this idiot was gone or whatever, a deadbeat, whatever, all right? I, I, hey, that's your fault, all right, woman, women, all right? That's your fault. I know women want to be like, oh, my God, I'm triggered. Did you hear that? He says it's the woman's fault. Uh, it takes two to tango, buddy. It takes two to tango. Yeah, you know what? Uh, that would technically be true. But unfortunately, on top of women uh, having the benefits as it relates to the entitlement system and the child support system, they also have it, uh, it benefits as it relates to uh, whatever the hell no means, and it relates to no means no, all right? Now, I'm not trying to make light of anyone who is legitimately raped, who was who legitimately stalked, uh, who was sought after, uh, unwarranted uh, sexual attacks, sexual acts, uh, uh, sexual exposure, uh, anything of that nature. I, th- I, I just think that's horrible, and that's why there, there are sex crimes or sexual databases for this crap, and I thank God for it, because we don't need sexual uh, deviance, t- true sexual deviance, out in the street without l- letting the public know that they're around and the, the, the probability of them doing whatever they were convicted of prior is very high. But let's define, you know, I, I know that the alt-right, or some of the alt-right, like people like uh, Milo Yiannopoulos, uh, you know, some of, the, uh, some of these other people, uh, I, 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 I don't know, there's a whole bunch of them out here. The, the, the big issue with them is trying to talk garbage about uh, college rape. And I understand, I mean, you know, they're trying to downplay what the feminists are trying to play in the universities, because that's basically what drives the feminist propaganda uh, to obtain more feminists within university systems. All right? I mean, they use this, oh, well, we have to stick together. It's woman power, and, you know, they, you get raped on, on campus, so you got to stick with me. And then, you know, when they have these little uh, get-togethers, you know, they play grab ass, and, you know, then they're like, here, you taste my taco. I mean, it's it's not a goddamn joke. I mean, you know, let me tell you, the, the feminist movement, in my opinion, and I will continue to say this, it is completely motivated by a bunch of fat, disgusting bull dykes, all right, that literally just want to be able to wake up in the morning and just, you know, throw on whatever shit-stained underwear and, you know, whatever ratty clothes they've been wearing the whole week and, uh, you know, not even caring about combing their hair, body odor, body hair, you know, just just complete disgusting, slovenly piece of garbage. 
uh, they want to be able to do that and go out and have you take them serious, you know, like serious. They, they want you to like take them like as a serious member of society, even though they look like a you know disgusting, filthy heathen. All right. Uh, and then at, on top of that, they want to use the rhetoric of feminism and like, oh, college rape and, you know, no means no. And, oh, oh, are you with a new girl on campus? Well, come over here. We, uh, us girls got to stick together. And mm, 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 mm. they pump them with this goddamn feminist garbage. They make, you know, them afraid of a penis. And then, you know, when they're out here hanging around each other, because that's the whole point what feminists want. They want them all to hang around each other. They want a nonstop slumber party. You know, they want the – I'm serious. I'm not, in my opinion, this is my opinion, all right? They want the whole slumber party effect where, you know – and let me tell you, unfortunately, uh, if you're an older lady listening to this or an older mother, your daughter has done this already. It's unfortunate. Uh, this is not something that's uncommon, for Christ's sake, that what I'm about to describe – these little girls, when they had them slumber parties, from what I understand, and, and look, this is, I mean, you could just ask, ask a, a woman, you know, when they would have these slumber parties, if they weren't playing grab ass and, you know, playing touchy hole and, you know, p- 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 all that crap, all right? I mean, all that lesbianic crap, all right? This is what these fat lesbian pieces of garbage want to relive over and over and over and over again, you know, for their own sexual gratification, in my opinion. All right? I mean, that's literally, I mean, just take a look at the loudest voices in the supposed feminist movement, all right? A bunch of fat, disgusting, slovenly bull dykes, you know, and look, I'm not trying to say anything about lesbian bull dykes or butches or whatever the hell you call it, you know, the... They want to look like men, those those ones. I, I have nothing against them. If you're paying taxes, if you're a capitalist, if, if you're working, I mean, Jesus Christ, I'm not. I, you could do whatever the hell you want to do, all right? But what's unfortunate is that uh, many of your, I don't know, since you want to be a guy, I don't know if you want to call them brethren or sisterhood. I, I don't know what the hell you want to call them. But many of these uh, bull dyke, butch, you know, whatever the hell you want to call these people, They have co-opted the idea of feminism and are utilizing it on university campuses to basically uh, utilize the universities as a, I guess I can't say meat market, but a meat wallet market, all right? I'm serious. I mean, that's literally what feminists have turned college campuses into. I mean, take a look. I mean, just do the research yourself, all right? Take a look at all these YouTube videos where there's all these goddamn feminists that are like, yeah. I mean, they're fat, disgusting, pathetic, just versions of themselves. I'm not trying to say that they should encapsulate any kind of uh, suggested image, but I've always said that you got to take pride in yourself, for Christ's sake, all right? I mean, if if you don't have respect for yourself, if people can see that you have no respect for yourself, then no one's ever going to respect you, man. You know what I'm saying? And you see, that's what the uh, lesbian feminist movement want to bypass. They want to bypass the fact that they have to get up and they have to make themselves look presentable. They've got to put the fucking fork down, excuse me, because, I mean, they're, they're all fat in the ass, all right? I'm telling you, uh, I'm telling you, of these fat bull dykes, the reason they're fat in the ass is a good time, a good Friday night, is getting a whole pie with one fork, all right? I'm serious. All right, I mean, literally, a Saturday night for these bras is like, you know, oh, shit, a, ga- a gallon of haagen Who needs to go to the bar for is it, when you got this? You know, I'm serious, all right? They just want to go ahead and just let themselves go, be a, be, a, be a tub of shit, and they want society just to accept this disgusting, filthy behavior. And on top of that, they want to force women to be confused about what their sexuality is so they can manipulate them through propaganda to dive on their muff. I mean, it's just as simple as this, folks. I'm serious. This is just, I mean, Jesus Christ, I'm the modern-day philosopher, folks. You understand this? I mean, I'm serious. I'm not joking. I mean, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but, you know, beep, beep here. I mean, seriously. Jesus Christ. All right, let me take some, I'm going to drink some more beer on top of that, for Christ's sake. Uh, we're done with this beer here. Let me chug. Let me chug what's in this damn glass here, and maybe we'll take some callers. If you're a mother, I want to hear from you. Five one six four five three nine nine zero three is the number to call here, folks. If you disagree with me, I'd like to hear from you. All right, seriously, we'll talk about the baby boomers in a little bit, but 
seriously, all this uh, Mother's Day and single mothers and feminism and all that, it all comes together. It's all one big wad of crap. And we're supposed to celebrate this today? Well, we're supposed to pat mom on her ass and say, hey, good job, mom. For what? I mean, do you know how to cook? Huh? Oh, I'm sure I triggered a bunch of bimbos on that one. Oh, he just wants to throw her in the kitchen. You know, nobody knows how to cook anymore, you dumbasses. You know that? I mean, you, you got that's why you got this explosion of fast food restaurants and uh, restaurants and, uh, you know, to-go places and uh, delivery joints and all kinds of crap because nobody knows how to freaking cook. You want to know why? Because mom left the kitchen. She left the goddamn kitchen, and where'd she go? I don't know. I'm still looking for her. Where, Mom, Mom, where the hell are you? Oh, yeah, that's right. You're at Applebee's looking for Alabama Black Snake during happy hour, for Christ's sake. I mean, good God. I'm serious, all right? I'm sorry. I'm not saying all women deserve to be in the kitchen now, all right? Don't freak out. But look, when y'all were in the kitchen, all right, with all due respect, when y'all were in the kitchen, y'all had more skills that literally if uh, the economy collapsed, or if there was a complete disaster, natural disaster, you would have more skills to survive because of what you've learned in the kitchen, what you've learned, you know, maintaining a household and what it takes, than you are now. What are you going to do now? You can't even take care of your own children now. I'm serious. Single mothers, I'm telling you, 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 you can't even take care of your own children now. What's going on with you? I mean, y'all got everything that y'all said y'all wanted and then some. I mean, it's in, it's the law now in a lot of cases. And what's your problem? I'll tell you what's the problem. You can't handle it. And you want to know why you can't handle it? Because you're not supposed to handle it. All right, you're supposed to have a husband there. And look, let me tell you something. I know that you people are going to say, well, I had a husband. And look, some of them may, maybe have died. Maybe uh, I'm not talking to you, obviously. All right. I'm talking about these women that are selfish, uh, you know, because you have a child out of selfish reasons, folks. Come on. I'm serious. That's the whole reason why you have a child. And what, you want to be celebrated for this crap? You have a child because, oh, I want a kid, and we're going to try to have a kid, and that's what we're going to try to do, and we're trying to get pregnant. (laughs) And a lot of these freaking broads out here, they want a kid because they, they like the attention. First of all, it goes back to Munchausen's by proxy. All right. They like the attention. And secondly, they like all the gifts and benefits that come with a goddamn child. And haven't you noticed everybody's got a goddamn child's birthday? You know, everybody, oh, I got a ba- I got another baby shower. Really? Another one? Really? Seriously? I mean, oh, I got a, you know, I'm just, Jesus Christ, just stop having children you can't afford, for Christ's sake, because you're having them out of a goddamn personal freaking ridiculous impulse. And that's what I'm calling you mothers out on today, on this anti-Mother's Day edition of the True Capitalist Radio Broadcast. All right, and this goes for you mothers that have your significant other. All right? If your child is a complete moron and a complete idiot or a complete screw-up or a kind of kooky or it's got fucking screws loose, excuse me, you need to look at yourselves in the mirror and say, hey, wait a minute, where did I go wrong? Because it's your fault. All right? Don't blame your kid for, you know, him being a kooked-out imbecile, all right? If you showed that kid the proper uh, parental uh, advice, attention, so on and so forth, he or she wouldn't be that way. Now, I'm not trying to say they're not going to do anything wrong, but, folks, uh, children are doing wrong decisions that are going to cost them a lifetime. You understand this? I mean, and this is what I talk about when it relates to prom night. You know, I was talking about prom night this week and telling the kids that are going out to prom night to, you know, don't drink, all right, don't get take any drugs and try not to partake in any sexual-related activities. And if you are, I mean, Jesus Christ, use some kind of protection so that you can prevent a freaking baby from coming into the world because you'll be ruining your whole life, all right? All your, your dreams, all your aspirations – just pissed away right when you have that child. And I'm not trying to say having a child is a bad deal, but let's be honest. I mean, you aren't going to be what you want to be because you have to take care of that child. And if you can't understand that, well, then you're a selfish bitch or a selfish prick, all right? Because, look, if you have a child, whether you want to admit it or see it or not, that child should be your freaking sole reason to get up every morning and to make sure that you raise a life that is a product, 
that you leave behind that's a hell of a lot better than you were. That's your job. You see, that's what I'm telling you stupid mothers out here that want all this freaking pat on the ass and, and a freaking diamond bracelet or some crap. You bitches are supposed to be doing this, you skankosaurus slut bags. And you're not doing a very good job, and the proof is in the goddamn pudding, for Christ's sake. Look at the population of the young people. It's pathetic. Look, I'm sorry if you get in a little upset. I don't care. I hope you're getting upset. You should get upset. You should be upset at yourself. I mean, Jesus Christ, you should be upset at your goddamn self. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're a good mother, you got a good child, you got a good life, well, obviously I'm not talking to you, all right? Jesus Christ. Some of these people, they get so goddamn annoyed, they're like, oh, I can't believe it. I'm not that kind of mother. What are you talking about? I love my kid. He loves me. She loves me. I'm not talking to you. If you really have a damn good family, well, good for you. You know, here, this Miller's for you. Cheers. Uh. All right, that's for you. Jesus Christ. Anyway, I want to hear from some callers out here, right? Uh, 516 453 It's the anti-Mother's Day edition of the True Capitalist Radio Broadcast. I hope we get across uh, some mothers out here. You know, I want to talk to some mothers and see why they deserve some goddamn, you know, pat on the ass for doing what they're supposed to do. Doing what you're supposed to do. But no, no, I deserve a day. I shitted out a couple of kids and look at me. <laughs> shove it up your ass. All right, just shove it up your goddamn ass. Jesus Christ. Here, let's, let's take, have we got any callers here, engineer? <laughs> All right, folks, let's go ahead and take some callers. Apparently we do got a little bit of callers here. And let's make sure they're rather decent here, right? I mean, let's stick to the radio graffiti pranks to the radio graffiti part of the broadcast, please, all right? Uh, 848, what's going on? You're on the air. Hey, Ghost. I just wanted to say uh, welcome back. It's been a while. I uh, I tried to get on the line with you, but uh, generally every time you're on the air, I'm working like three or four jobs. So I just wanted to say hey, and um, and thank you so much for all your advice. I've been listening to a lot of your, um, like, I guess all your what what do you call it? The archive or whatever. And honestly, no, I hey, I appreciate advice. I I appreciate you listening. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to tell you kind of a story. Um, I'm actually working at this food truck um, before I go to college, and generally speaking, I mean, you're not kidding about the fucking fast food thing. Go, I mean, excuse my fat French, but um, like there are these jelly ass people who just they get all angry when I make. All right, so here's the story. Um, so we have like this city ordinance where people are not allowed to park on the street. They have to actually park their cars. And generally speaking, a lot of people don't take that, especially fat people. They hate to like walk and it's not that far at all. It's just like a simple walk. But when I tell them that they get all mad and they, they're all big jelly asses and it's ridiculous. Oh my gosh. And, and, and you know, they're collecting some form of entitlement or some sort correct oh of course they are i see these fucking people and they're just i mean even one person threatened to like he said he was a cop and he was like 300 400 pounds so oh jeez, a a a bureaucrat you know same difference you know i mean (laughs) these bureaucrats do the same thing hey man i'm glad that you are actually going out and you're working and you're doing your thing man because uh let me tell you uh are you are you in your early 20s or what, what are you yeah, I'm 22. I actually used to listen to a lot when I was 17 and 18. I used to, like, make a bunch of, you know, jokes and whatever. But I, I'm over that stuff. I'm actually listening to you. I'm on the Trump train, man. And, you know, Trump 2016 and, you know, screw those Democrats and the freaking GOP, man. No, hey, I, I appreciate you, and thank you for calling up. I mean, you know, it's it's it's, call, it's callers like that that make what I'm doing worthwhile. I mean, that's the whole point. I mean, you could tell this young gentleman – was probably 17, he said, when he was listening to me. The man is now 22. He's out there working while he's, uh, you know, going to college, gaining massive amounts of experience, uh, you know, trying to educate himself, trying to further his possibilities. And, you see, that's what it's all about. I mean, uh, I mean, this is why I do what I do, man. I'm serious. On top of, you know, whatever entertaining value and, 
whatever anybody else finds on the show. I do this so that, uh, you know, people can be informed. Uh, people can be, you know, they can take whatever they will from it. I'm, I am a capitalist. And as I've stated, folks, I am trying to write a book here. I'm trying to write it as fast as I possibly can, but uh, tr- uh, trying to make it a, a really decent uh, piece uh, as it relates to capitalists. All right, I know that there's a lot of folks out there that don't really understand or know how to become a successful capitalist. And as I've stated, folks, you don't have to be rich to be a capitalist. All you need to do is sustain whatever lifestyle that appeases you for the meantime. Remember, you can always raise that lifestyle, but don't raise it too hard, man, because when you fall, it's a hard way down. All right, but you're able to sustain whatever lifestyle you have and ha- obtain assets, folks. And I'm going to describe that in that in the book and moreover, I'm going to describe a recipe for success in capitalism, even if you're just an, a motivated child. If you're somebody who's 13, 14, uh, you could possibly take what is being written in this book and actually start capitalizing on your own. Uh, it is that simple. I'm going to, it's not for capitalists who are already experienced, who you know, are successful in their own regard, Uh, who know the market, so on and so forth. I am doing a bare-bones, very easy book so that individuals can basically take the recipe on how to be a capitalist and go out and use it, all right? Because everybody can become a capitalist, folks. I'm serious. It's not a joke. I'm not trying to, you know, feed you guys a bunch of malarkey here. This is is for real. Anyway, I'm not going to plug that. I think it's going to be sometime next month. Is when we uh, start releasing that. It'll be an ebook so that everybody can download it and it'll be very inexpensive. So there'll be no reason why you're not a capitalist, all right? No reason. Anyway, thank you very much uh, for that last caller. Let's take some more callers here. 516 453 9903, the anti Mother's Day edition of the True Capitalist Radio Show. Uh, as I've stated, uh, you know, I did have a soliloquy about Mother's Day, single mothers, and feminism and uh, basically balled it all into one because it basically is one. And I want to hear from you. Are you a mother? you have something to say about it? Huh? You think I'm being some kind of a sexist lizard or something? And if that's the case, let me go ahead and open up a beer. Ah, uh, yeah, you hear that? Right? It's a new beer. Just pretend that you just got it for me, woman, if you're offended, all right? You just pretend that you just got that goddamn beer for me if you're offended by anything that I'm saying, all right? Uh, you do. You go ahead and do that. Here, let me pour it in. Or you know what? You pretend you pour it in. How about that? You pour it in, woman. You pour it the goddamn hell in. All right, there you go. All right, get out of here. Get the hell out of here now. Anyway, where was I? Anyway, uh, where where was I for Christ? So you see, I'm 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 I'm. I'm I'm talking garbage to an imaginary mother out here. I'm sorry. I'm like, I mean, uh, I, my conscience is like, didn't you just, did you just hear what you said to the mothers of the world, for Christ's sake? You're telling them to just imagine you're getting her their, a beer? Jesus Christ. Well, you know what? Just imagine it and like it, ladies, all right? And, of course, if you're a lady capitalist, if you're doing your own thing, thing you know what I'm saying? You can do whatever you want, all right? I'm serious. If you were a successful woman capitalist, you could go out and, bang whoever you want just don't have any children of course you know because that's irresponsible and not only that's going to cost you a lot of money all right and secondly you can do whatever you want eat what you want drink what you want do whatever you want all right i mean just take care of you and make sure you got assets growing assets baby anyway let me go ahead and take some callers here i want to hear a mother that's what i want to hear i want to hear a goddamn mother Try to tell me that I'm I'm saying something wrong or sexist or that I'm some bad guy, I'm some I'm some lizard or something of that nature. I want to hear somebody's mother. All right, Jesus Christ. Uh, anyway, who we got here? Uh, how about nine four one? You there? Hey, ghost. Heard you got the problem with the Mother's Day thing, huh? I feel you. Hey, pain, uh, hey, there it is. It's Karaskin, baby. How you doing? You celebrate Mother's Day today? No, I'm not too crazy about it. And if I, matter of fact, no. I just think this is a big waste of time and money, if you know what I mean. I, 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 couldn't ag- I could not agree with you more, Karaskin. It's a big waste of time and money is absolutely right. You sound a little somber. You all right? I just got the blues, actually. 
Well, you got a little bit of the blues, man. What's giving you the blues, man? Uh, well, well, I don't know. I'd rather not say. Actually, anyway, uh, the Mother's Day is familiar to birthdays or Father's Day, and if they all have one thing in common, they make you pay stuff for a specific person. And it's kind of annoying because you try to save your money, but all your money went down the drain for that one person, and you just couldn't get it, and you have to start over from the ground up. No, I, I completely agree, Koreskin. And, hey, stay there for Radio Graffiti. I agree with you. I mean, I don't like celebrating these fictitious, stupid holidays. And I'm glad you brought up, Koreskin, the birthday, because I, I don't like birthdays either, all right? So what? You were shitted out of your mother's uterus hole. Congratulations. So is everybody else. I mean, what do you want, a cookie and presents? I mean, you know you got some of these assholes that are like, hey, it's my birthday month. I'm going to celebrate it all month. Great. You know, congratulations. What is that getting you, you stupid moron? Jesus Christ. And and anybody who gets a moron a gift for their birthday, I I just think it's obnoxious and stupid. I don't get anybody anything for their birthday. If anything, uh, I'll... I'll just, you know, maybe buy them a beer or something like that, or, you know, take them to a bar and be like, hey, you want to, you know, that's it. I'm not sitting here. And not to mention, even when I'm at the bar with these sons of bitches, I tell them, I don't want to hear about your birthday, all right? When we're here drinking, I don't want to hear about it, so just shut up. All right? I don't care that you were shitted out of some stupid broad's uterus pipe, all right? I don't care, all right? Jesus Christ. Anyway, thanks for calling, Karaskin. We really appreciate your input. Uh, we're going to take some more callers here, talking a little bit about Mother's Day. This is the anti-Mother's Day edition of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. As I've stated, folks, Mother's Day is a pathetic, ridiculous, fictitious holiday. And as I stated earlier in the broadcast, on an almost $200 is spent on average for mother today. Almost 200 bucks. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. And Obama, too. In Obama, too, the average person has 200 bucks in their pocket to spend on meh. Oh, Christ. Anyway, folks, I'm sorry. I don't think that, you know, it, it should be celebrated that you were shitted out of your mother's uterus pipe or your mother shitted you out of your uterus. I mean, you know, that's a stupid reason to celebrate. It's stupid. I mean, do you know that domesticated animals in uh, freaking farms, when they're shitted out, they're put right in the pasture and, you know, they're fed. And then, you know, when they're good and fat, you know what I'm saying, they'll go ahead and just, you know, uh, eat them. You know what I'm saying? They'll kill them and eat them. Jesus Christ. Anyway, who else do we got going on? Do we have any more freaking callers, engineer? All right, we got a few more callers here. Let's see what we got. Six one nine, you're on the horn. What's up? Hello, oh, hello. I think you got clicked off the air. I don't know. They hung up. They hung up, engineer. Did you click them off or what the hell, engineer? Well, I guess uh, we lost six one nine. How about the Teutonic plague? What's going on, Teutonic plague? Hey, ghost. What's up? How you doing, man? Uh, not great, I'm afraid. I mean, it is Mother's Day, and I hate Mother's Day as much as you, for fuck's sake. For reasons that, for the, not only for the reasons that you said, but I want to tell you a little bit about my mother, all right? My biological-ass mother. All right, well, you sure you want to share that uh, with us, or you, you want to be candid with, your, with us for, about it and stuff? Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll talk right. to you about my mom a little bit. All right, go right ahead, Teutonic Plague. We'll we'll be more than happy to listen to it. Go ahead, man. What do you got to say about your mom? Well, I'll give you a hint. When I was born, uh, my father was 21, and my mother was 15, for God's sake. Oh, man, are you kidding me? Is is this a troll here, or are you serious? No, I'm I'm as serious as death. 21-year-old father in the Navy gets with this 20, gets with this freaking... 14-year-old girl, they bone, they shit me out, and then they get married. She leaves me on my freaking grandparents' doorstep at six months old because she lacks the financial wherewithal to take care of me. Apparently, my father looked good in his fucking dress uniform or some shit. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, women are really attracted to uniforms. I don't get why that makes them wet, but go ahead. Uh, Anyway... 
I don't blame. I mean, I think a uniform, uh, the right kind of uniform, looks pretty freaking snappy, and it makes you look cool. But that's it. But seriously, I mean, good God, uh, he's 21, she's 15, and she, and after uh, she dumps me off at my freaking grandparents' door, she, doorstep, she divorces this. She divorces my father. All right. She divorces this man. All right. Meets uh, meets some banker on the uh, internet, some Swiss guy on the internet, goes off and marries him. Are you kidding? No way! Are you kidding me? I mean, this is gonna be a I, troll here. No, are no, you serious? No, I'm serious. Yes, I'm serious. This actually fucking happened. Wow, what an interesting story there. So, let me uh, let me ask you a question then. Um, Shoot. Did did she take you with? Uh, did 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 you go into this situation here with her? Uh, no, no. I was about three or four at the time. I was with my grandparents. I lived with my grandparents for a while, and uh, well, now I'm of course living on my own in a college dormitory. But uh, I go to their house and hang out with them or help them out or whatever needs to be done because they're my grandparents. They actually take good care of me, and my grandmother is one of the very few mothers. Well, I should say quote unquote mothers that actually deserves a pat on the back because she actually, without her, I would not be the man I am today. I would probably be fruitier than a goddamn mimosa. But no, she and my grandfather, they, they raised me, and, and without them, I would not be the Teutonic Plague. So, Well, that's a great story. Uh, tragic, but still great there at the end, uh, you know, knowing that you have grandparents that were able to take care of you. And uh, you appreciate your grandmother. I actually am very fond of my grandmother as well. She was a very pious woman, uh, you know, very... Uh, I, I listened to your show in the archive, yes. I've, I've noticed uh, your granny was a pious woman, never heard a soul, and I heard you say at one time, at one point, that uh, whenever you had leftovers after supper, she'd give it to the neighbors. Your grandmother sounds like a really nice lady ghost. Uh, God, you know what? God rest her soul, all right? God rest her soul. Hey, thank you very much, Teutonic Plague. As a matter of fact, I'll keep you on the line for Radio Graffiti, but that, thank you for being so candid about your personal situation. Uh, but you see, it seems as though that strife uh, has made you who you are today. Uh, you're an aspiring scientist, from what I understand, so on and so forth. So uh, keep on trucking, man. Uh, you know, no, no matter what happens, no matter what life throws at you, for Christ's sake, you can deal with it all. All right, just 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 brush your shoulders off and remember that you're a capitalist. You want to be a capitalist, and uh, you want to carve out your own destiny. You want to carve out your own life, man. So thank you for your kind words about my grandmother, and uh, uh, your grandmother sounds just as pious and uh, you know just as uh, uh, just as motherly as uh, as your mother should have been in my personal view. So thank you very much for that. Uh, once again, we're going right back to the phones. It's the anti mother's day edition of the true capitalist radio broadcast. You know, before we do that, let's go ahead and take some Twitter shout outs because it's almost the uh, two hour more mark. Uh, do we have any Twitter shout outs to be given out engineer? All right, for you folks that uh, want a live shout-out right here, right now, live on the True Capitalist Radio broadcast, all you have to do is go to my Twitter account, Politics Ghost, all one word, no underscores, Politics Ghost, and retweet the first tweet on my Twitter account, the one that says, Anti-Mother's Day Show Now Live. Anti-Mother's Day Show Now Live. You retweet that, I'll go ahead and... Uh, I'll go ahead and give you a shout out right now. All right, who else do we got? We got Pray for Canada in the house. Yeah, I know. Give me a break, man. That inferno is going out of control. Uh, we got DSP underscore text in the house. Uh, we've got uh, Sweet and Petite. All right, that's that's very funny. All right, uh, Ghost's mom is Anne Frank. Yeah, real funny asshole. All right, real funny. Uh, Vagu Dental Dentist. Jesus Christ. Uh, who else do we got? No Dad for Go... Oh, you son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. You know, just because I'm talking about my old man over here, and now he used to drink these goddamn Miller High Life pints, for Christ's sake. I'm trying to be a little nostalgic over here, and you're going to try to, you know, use one of those goddamn emotional jabs. And I, well, it ain't going to work, boy. This is Mother's Day, for Christ's sake. I'm more pissed off about these women that want to get their pads on the ass... Then you're gonna get 
you know, as it relates to any of the goddamn emotional goddamn uh, daggers you're going to throw at yours truly, all right? Son of a bitch. Uh, gills for ghosts. Oh, Jesus Christ. You know, we're still having rain out here. You know what? We're still having freaking rain. Hey, Harp. Hey, assholes at Harp. Enough, all right, you stupid bookworm, weather manipulating pricks. Enough. Geico presents sharing versus oversharing. Earlier this week, Claire Tippins shared a princess nickname generator, three pictures of her dog wearing a tutu, and two online quizzes, including what candy is your dream castle made of? Claire, your sharing has tipped the sugar scale and turned into oversharing. But have no fear, princess. Geico has something worth sharing with your internet kingdom, like how you could save hundreds on your car insurance just by visiting geico.com. No magic wand required. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Jesus Christ, man. En- enough, all right? Anyway, we got John S.K. Woe. Uh, we've got uh, Fish Center Fan. we got Commander Biff in the house. Uh, who else do we got? I'm not going to say that sick-ass name. What's going on, a metal capitalist? Hey, Zara Hawks in the house. Uh, Muddy Kip 77 in the place. Uh, who else do we got going on over here? Come on, let's let's get some more Twitter shout-outs. Politics Ghost is the name. All right, and uh, you retweet the first tweet on my Twitter account. I will give you a Twitter shout-out live on the broadcast right now. Uh, let's go to a couple more Twitter shout-outs, see what we have. All right, we've got Grove Street for Ghost. Okay, that's you stupid son of a bitch. AJ Styles, 1987 in the house. 16 and pregnant. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Oh, that's just great, isn't it? Jesus Christ. Welcome to America. Welcome to goddamn America. Dr. Mantifricor. Whatever the hell that means. Uh, Joshua loves Phil. Joshua loves Phil. Jesus Christ. God, you're trying to profess your love to your fruity boy over there? Jesus Christ. I mean, I guess you know, more power to you as long as you're capitalist, for Christ's sake. Uh, Drew Drunkazuru, whatever the hell that's supposed to mean. Uh, we've got uh, Trump Hambone. Yeah, real funny asshole, all right? Uh, we got somebody order followers here. Jesus Christ, selling f- followers for Christ's sake! Capitalist UK in the house. What's going on? We got Sergeant Yoda in the place. Uh, Wet Lone Star. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you stupid soulless scumbags. Get that asshole off my screen. Get him out. We've got Barney Hunter twelve in the house. Uh, let's keep it going, folks. Let's keep it going. Ghost Mom's a bull dyke. Oh, real funny, asshole. Real funny. Real- <laughs> uh, look, that really isn't funny. Seriously. All right, enough. All right, look, look. I know that I may say a lot of things about the lesbianic bull dykes, for Christ's sake. And look, you know, more power to you if you're a capitalist, you're doing your own thing, thing, and whatever. So, whatever, all right? Just, just whatever. But I, I just, I have the personal decision to not really like how you look, I mean, unless you're a professional person. I mean, there's some professional bull dykes out here. I mean, I'm, you know, they, they're wearing pantsuits, and, you know, they're trying to, you know, they have some kind of dignity for themselves. But I'm talking about these disgusting, slovenly, filthy, you know, uh, pizza stain on the shirt, you know, shit stain on the pants, fuck, just just disgusting. You know, you know I'm just going to chop my hair off real short, roll out of the bed, and, you know, you know walk around with bed head. I mean, just give me a break. We're supposed to take you serious. Uh, YouTubers over ghosts. Oh, that's real funny for Christ's sake. Look, I hate YouTube. All right. I mean, I, I don't. I don't want my content to, you know, or uh, to produce content for YouTube. As far as I'm concerned, all right. And I know that oh, you get so many followers, and you, 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 I don't want uh, that kind of fame. All right. I don't even want fame for Christ's sake. All right. I want to be like El Huapo uh, in uh, The Three Amigos. I want to be infamous, all right? That's what I want to be, all right? I want to be infamous, for Christ's sake. Anyway, uh, we've got Drowning for TCR. Jesus Christ, enough of the flood jokes already, right? This is serious business. Jesus, you soulless bastard, for Christ's sake. Pootie Pie Gosler, real funny for Christ's sake. Look, I don't want to hear Pootie Pie's name on my broadcast ever, or Markipiler, or any 
ever, ever, ever. I don't want to hear those fruity bastards' names on my broadcast, all right? I got to see them all over the place when I'm scouring for content, any kind of video content, for Christ's sake. I got to see these butt-loving fruit bowls, for Christ's sake, that look like they just hopped out of the fruitiest bathhouse in San Francisco, Cisco, and they're, they're popular, for Christ's sake. I mean, and then we wonder why our children are so fruit bowlish, for Christ's sake. Then we wonder why we've got freaking children and freaking teenagers and these young people wearing these over-feminized clothes, having these over-feminized physical attributes, for Christ's sake. I mean, Jesus Christ, have you seen these goddamn stupid, pathetic, tight, legging jeans? It's pathetic! It's sick! They've got anal camel toe, for Christ's sake! I mean, good God! Jesus Christ. Look, I don't want to do any more... Get get it off the screen, engineer. I don't want to do no more Twitter shout-outs. I'm already getting off keister over here. I'm already getting a little haywire out here. It's bad enough that it's Mother's Day. That's why I'm doing this anti-Mother's Day edition of the True Capitalist Radio Broadcast. You understand that, boy? You understand it? God damn, I better catch my breath, folks. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm going off keister, folks, but you understand where I'm coming from, right? I mean, I've been discussing this for about an hour, for Christ's sake. You understand where I'm coming from, correct? (sighs) Jesus Christ. (sighs) Jesus Christ. Give me some more big... Give me my drink, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. I gotta drink some more beer here, man. I'm getting off keister for Christ's sake, man. I'm serious. I mean, it's freaking Mother's Day. I'm just, I'm just sick of it. I can just feel the, the, the false self-esteem. You know, I, I can feel the freaking pedestal all around the air for Christ's sake. It's disgusting. Oh my God. Jesus Christ, folks. Anyway, I want to remind people that we do do this broadcast live every Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Today, today is just a random Sunday show that we do for the anti-Mother's Day edition of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast, all right? And that's why we do what we do. Anyway, I better calm down, man. I'm just, I I just got to calm down for heaven's sake. I got to calm down. Give me some more freaking drink. Uh, now let's top it off. Let's finish it off. That's what I'm talking about, man. Let's get some more beer. More beer, for Christ's sake. We have some more beer here. Here. And look, I, I know I triggered a bunch of... Uh, I know I triggered a bunch of, you know, mothers out there like, did he just pretend to say that I just gave him that beer? Yeah, give me another one, all right, you mothers yeah, that are out there listening to me. God, you, you pretend that you just gave me this beer right now, all right? And be grateful that you gave it to me, all right, because you screwed up the children, all right? You screwed up the kids. How you like that? Jesus Christ. Here, let me, let me open it up while you're at it. All right, now get the hell out of here. Anyway, folks, uh, sorry, we're well into the second hour of the True Capitalist radio broadcast. And, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. Before we get into anything else, I'd like for everybody to please retweet the broadcast. All right, Facebook, like the broadcast, whatever it takes, folks. There's all kinds of little buttons next to the player right in front of you right there. Use and abuse those buttons, baby, all right? It's just a freaking click, for Christ's sake, you freaking lazy bastards. All right, go to the forum posts. Go to the blogs and spread it around. Spread it around. Spread it around like wildfire. And let everybody know the True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house. Let me go ahead and pour this beer here. Oh, yeah. You see what I'm saying, folks? I got to keep drinking. I'm going to keep drinking, for Christ's sake. All right? I'm going to keep drinking because, uh, you know, I, I just, it's its Mother's Day. It's just an anti-Mother's Day edition, and just thinking about these subject matters makes me sick. 
I want to hear from you. Are you a mother? Huh? You think you deserve a pat on the ass? Huh? You think you deserve some kind of gold bracelet? Huh? Some kind of a pearl necklace? Well, maybe you deserve one of those pearl necklaces, but not the pearl necklaces that you want. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, let's take some calls here. 516-453-9903 is the number to call here. Let's take some calls, shall we? Let's see who we got here. 423, you're on the horn. Hey, goes. So my mom's husband didn't want to mow the lawn, so I'm out mowing the lawn because uh, he didn't want to. Um, great show. I wondered if you could leave me on the line, but I do have a question uh, to ask of you. Is that all right? All right, go ahead. All right. So I was trying to get my mom to listen to your show, you know, but she says you're just kind of rough and she doesn't like it when you swear it off. But then I noticed that she gets a little bit of a, I don't know, a look in her eye, you know, she gets a little hot and bothered when she hears you throwing around your manly dominance. So, you know, she, she's kind of secretly listening to the show inside, I think. Anyway, well, you know, I, I I don't blame her, boy. I don't blame her. Or I mean, to be honest with you, I suggest that you turn up the damn volume. If your mother is in the other room, turn up the volume for Christ's sake. You're goddamn right. You saw a gleam in your mother's eye when you tried to introduce her to the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. They don't make men like this man right here anymore. For Christ's sake, all right. I mean, I am legitimately throwing around manly dominance all over this goddamn internet like it ain't shit. And I'm telling you, every woman that's in the fiber optically connected world that we call the internet, any woman within the vicinity of this voice right here is in complete awe. In complete freaking awe at the manly dominance that is being displayed, for Christ's sake. I wouldn't be surprised, young man, I don't mean to be so vulgar, I wouldn't be surprised if your mother is in another room trying to put a foreign object up her you-know-what listening to this broadcast. I'm not kidding around, all right? I wouldn't be surprised if she's trying to ride the corner on the spin cycle of her goddamn dryer right now listening to my voice right goddamn now. I don't blame them, boy. I don't blame them. Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and drink to that, all right? Hopefully your mother is going out and saying, Oh, my God, why isn't my husband like this? Oh, my God, I can't believe this. My husband's a, a fruit bowl. I mean, is that, is that what Ghost says, a fruit bowl? Yeah, she said he's a fruit bowl. You're goddamn right your husband's a damn fruit bowl, boy. You understand that? I mean, I... I, I come from a, a legion of men out here. We're, we're badasses, for Christ's sake. We're filled with piss and fury, for Christ's sake. All right, I'm serious. It ain't nothing for us to whoop another man's ass if necessary. That's why I'm not afraid to say, hey, look, I wouldn't be talking like this, boy, if I didn't walk around life and talk like this in real life. I'm serious. I mean, I do this all too well if you think that this is just all an act, for Christ's sake. All right, I mean, I'll walk around through life. Like this, for Christ's sake, man. I'm telling you. I'm a big man, all right? Let me tell you, I mean, I, 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 it, I don't shy away from violence that I can get away with. Let's just put it that way, right? I, I think I said this the other day. Out here on 6th Street, there's all kinds of bar brawls that happens, for Christ's sake. And when, if, I'm in, if I'm in a damn bar and I see somebody and I see there's going to be a potential bar brawl in the making, I look for somebody that I hate, you know, that I didn't like the way they looked, the way they acted, you know, they, they're dressed like a pipsqueak. They think they're better than they are. Whatever the case might be, once the bar brawl commences, I start punching that idiot in the face. All right? And seriously, I like bar brawls. I use bar brawls for freaking exercise, baby. You understand? It burns calories, for Christ's sake. I'm not joking around. I mean, I'm serious. I, I don't. I'm, this is not just some act. I don't just talk like this because, oh, uh, it's an act. You don't, you don't get to talk like this. You don't talk like this unless you've been talking like this your whole goddamn life, and that's the way I've been doing, boy. You understand that? If you don't get me respect, you better get me respect. You know what I'm saying? You better give it to me, boy. Anyway, let me let me stop uh, getting off keister there. But seriously, I don't I don't blame that young man's mother being a little flustered. You know, probably you know getting herself a little aroused. If you understand what I'm saying. Well, you know, getting a little moist in the pants, for a lack of a better term. You understand what I'm saying? All right? Anyway, let me go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and drink some of this beer here, for Christ's sake, because I want to keep drinking. I mean, I'm already, 
I'm already three pints in this show. I want to keep drinking, all right? I mean, it's anti-Mother's Day edition. All right, let me tr- take a drink of this, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the baby boomers, all right? Oh, oh, that's right. We're going to talk a little bit about the baby boomers, folks, because I've been talking about the baby boomers for a long time, folks. This show goes back to the year 2008, and I've been a critic of the baby boomers because, folks, I mean, the generation has legitimately screwed Generation X, Generation whatever Y was, and the millennials, all right? You people are being genuinely screwed, and be, be, by the time they are out of this life, these goddamn baby boomers are going to leave us with a whole bunch of nonsense. And this is why you've got a lot of the older element of uh, the Republican Party against Donald Trump, because Donald Trump is going to redefine the economic system, and it may not be to the baby boomers' advantage, as it always has been. All right, I'm, and, and look, if you didn't you know, watch that one video that I tweeted as it related to how the baby boomers are screwing uh, Generation X and uh, the millennials. Well, I strongly advise you after the show to go back in my timeline history, find it, and watch it, all right, because you are genuinely getting royally screwed. And what's what's unfortunate, folks, is that over 80% of the wealth in America today is possessed by the baby boomers, all right? And then you wonder why you don't have an economic opportunity out here? Huh? And then you wonder why whatever economic opportunity you do have out here, whatever beans you get from whatever low-wage uh, job you have, you got to pay Social Security for these people? Because you sure as hell ain't going to get it, folks. I know I know. it seems like, you know, you got all these people making you believe that, oh, it'll be there. Don't worry. <laughs> It ain't going to be there for you, folks. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't think that the baby boomers deserve to get it either. Because they already outspent that money with all these ridiculous social programs that have plagued and destroyed America. And that's my personal opinion. I strongly believe that these people that are on Social Security out here, they need to get that crap cut off. All right, now I know I'm probably shocking a lot of old people out here, but with all due respect to the baby boomers, you caused all this crap. All right? You caused all this crap. Moreover, every single one of these bubbles you all created, and they're all going to bust. You know it. I know it. Everybody who understands finance knows it. And you should be held accountable to some capacity, in my personal opinion. You have had the greatest, most charmed piece of garbage life in history. And you are the most ungrateful, uh, selfish, self-absorbed pieces of crap that ever walked the face of the earth. And I sincerely believe that the baby boomers will go down in history as one of the most evil uh, generations in world history. Because they had the opportunity to make civilization a better place, and by the time they left it, they, they, they're going to leave it in a complete shambles, complete destruction. And I think it's disgusting and pathetic, and in my personal opinion, I think that they should be taken away, those goddamn Social Security benefits, because once again, that money's not even really there. We're taking on debt to pay that crap. You understand this, right? I mean, we, we're taking on debt to pay these Social Security people. And let me tell you, there's more of these people collecting Social Security than there are working. It's a scheme. It's a Ponzi scheme, for Christ's sake. And you Generation Xers and you Millennials need to wake up and realize that you people are being sucked out of any potential wealth. You people are being sucked out of any potential earnings, potential anything because it's being siphoned off of you and being put into the uh, baby boomer generation's pockets. Take a look at who runs every system that you have to pay. Uh, baby boomers. All right, I'll take a look at the CEOs. Take a look at the, uh, the head bureaucrats. Uh, take a look at the people that are in charge of the education industry. Take a, look, take a look at it all. Take a look at it all. It's all baby boomers, for Christ's sake. All baby boomers. That's why I'm telling you, eight, over 80% of the wealth is in their pocket. And what are they telling you kids to do? Oh, you've got to go to college. 
And what do y'all kids do when you're putting yourself into serfdom for college? You understand this, right? You are putting yourself into serfdom. So whatever earnings potential that you may have, if you have a college debt, because, and I'm going to keep saying it, because of 2009, the stimulus package, too, that was passed by the Democratic Congress and Senate and signed into office by Barack Obama, nationalized the college debt, and basically anybody who is taking on college debt after that has to pay on it for life. Because, folks, previous to 2009, you could file college debt in your bankruptcy, and it'd be a lot easier to deal with. You understand that? Uh, you could put that in your bankruptcy with a whole bunch of other crap. That's what your professors did, man. That's what most of your professors did. But, you see, they robbed you of that opportunity just as they've robbed you of each and every opportunity that was accorded to them as baby boomers. You know, baby boomers all had job security. Yeah, they all had pensions, they all had the retirement funds, they you know, they all had the cheap uh, real estate prices, they had the cheap stock prices. Uh, they, I mean, are you kidding me? When it comes, they had the sexual revolution, they had the drug culture, they had free love, hippies, you know, smoking, you know, having mud pit orgies at goddamn Woodstock. They had uh, doing a little dance, making a little love, the 70s, sniffing cocaines off of tits, you know, uh, Studio 54, uh, all that other nonsense, and you know what? They kept partying. You know, they, they they went into the 80s, and that's why I'm telling you, folks, you know, culture, you know, it changed dramatically uh, based on the consumption of people, all right? I mean, you know, and it's a testament to what was important at the time. You take a look at the 60s. Oh, yeah, free love, dude. Yeah, we're going to do this and that. Then the, the 70s came along. It's like, oh, well, I guess we did it, baby. Do a little dance, make a little love. I got bell bottoms, cocaine, all this other crap. Then came the 80s, for Christ's sake, and in the 80s, folks, and that's why it was trending, what makes the 80s great? I'll tell you what made the 80s great. Everybody had money. Any capitalist, anybody who aspired to be an earner had serious money, all right? I mean, look at the culture at the time, man. People talk about gay rights today, gay I mean, there was so much fruity music at the time by openly gay people. I mean, people that got the AIDS, for Christ's sake, they were so fruity and gay, all right, like like the quick aids, like, you know, the one that they claim that's not around anymore, how convenient. Like, you know, you get it, and then like three months later, you're dead, and you're sh a shriveled up uh, a zombie-looking skeleton. But seriously, man, take a look. Duran, Duran, uh, Flock of Seagull, uh, I mean, what the hell? Uh, you know, you fruity-ass bands, man. And why was that? Because we were... The melting pot, and everybody was making money. And you see, folks, that proves that capitalism works. Okay, in the '80s, everybody was having a good time. Ask anybody who lived in the '80s, even if they grew up in the '80s, for Christ's sake, they're going to say it's one of the best times that they've ever experienced. I mean, it was the pinnacle of American success. All right, I mean, everybody had money. That's why you know it, it's a way different world at the. Just look at the culture at the time; it was obnoxious. Why was the culture obnoxious? Because everybody had money. I mean, we were, we were at the time I wasn't, but these idiots out here were buying freaking uh, uh, these metal bands, these hair metal bands of guys that look like women. All right, I mean, you take a look at Boy George for heaven's sake. I mean, this is all 80s. Look at Prince, man. I mean, it's come out of the National Enquirer that he may have died of the goddamn AIDS. I mean, this is what I'm talking about, man. This was 80s culture. How did 80s culture come about? That Because everybody had freaking money. Everybody was a capitalist. So everybody was an earner, for Christ's sake. Everybody was working in the 80s. That's what made the 80s so great. That's what made the 80s so great. But take a look at our culture now, folks. Huh? I mean, I mean, and look, I'm telling you, the culture, pop music, movies, uh, style, fashion, it all encompasses the time, in my personal opinion. You compare the 70s and the 80s, where it was rather obnoxious. I mean, bell-bottoms and afros, for Christ's sake, it was obnoxious. It was stupid. All right? I mean, you know, take a look at the 80s, for Christ's sake, fruit bowl bands and, uh, you know, 80s hair bands where guys were dressed like half like women, for Christ's sake, poofing out their hair. I mean, it, it was obnoxious and stupid because, I mean, everybody had money. Nobody wanted to be violent. You know, nobody wanted to go out and, you know, slap hoes, pimp hoes. 
You know, no, no one, uh, nobody was singing about my baby mama, my baby daddy. Nobody was, nobody was singing about that crap. Take a look at our culture now. Our culture is anesthetized with violence. Is anesthetized with, uh, and I'm talking about the hip hop culture, folks. That's what's dominating right now. All right, I mean that is what's dominating right now, folks, and it is the sign of the times. All right, we have failed, and it's because of we fell asleep at the wheel, man. The baby boomers, believe it or not, they're the ones that have steered this ship, and they steered it right into the iceberg. And it's been taken on water, taken on water, and unfortunately the millennials and the Generation Xers are in the, the what do they call it, the third class or something. You're out there in the back. They got you gated up. They're like, no, everything's fine, mate. I don't know what you're talking about. That's great over here. Don't worry. Go back to your bunks. Everything's okay. Here, ha- have some free food. Have have some free uh, hors d'oeuvres. Look, we'll put some music on. You can dance around. I mean, that's what, that's what they did to you, man. They're st- they've steered the goddamn ship of America into the iceberg. The sh- damn thing's taken on water. And you millennials and you Generation Xers are the goddamn third class being trapped by the first and saying everything's okay, don't worry about it. That, that, that smash that you heard and the water that's coming in, don't worry about it. It's a little bit of malfunction. we got to take it care of. And by the time that the, sick, the, the, excuse me, the ship is sinking, excuse me, by the time the, the ship is sinking, you're already drowned by the, by the time these people have already jumped ship. And that's exactly what's happening to the millennials and the Generation Xers right now. And you people need to start becoming a very aware about what's going on. That's why when you see your elders, you don't need to respect these. Seriously, if you see your elders, for Christ's sake, you know what you should tell these people? You're welcome. You're welcome we're still supporting your old asses, for Christ's sake. You're welcome. You're welcome that my tax dollars are supporting your ass, for Christ's sake. Because what the hell did you leave us? I'm telling you, you you poor generation extras, you poor millennials, and anybody who's born thereafter, I feel so bad for you guys, because you are left a world of crap. I'm serious, left a complete world of crap. I mean, you don't have no opportunity. I mean, that's why you got these stupid millennials bitching. You know, that's why you got them uh, you know, over there at these Bernie Sanders rallies, for Christ's sake, you know, talking about free this, free that. That's what the damn baby boomers wanted from you, you idiots, because by the time they're out of this life, they're going to leave you this big mess that you have to fix. And you see, I don't mean to be bring Donald Trump into this random Sunday anti-Mother's Day edition show, but that's what Trump represents, folks. He's going to try to fix some of this crap, and that's why he's such a threat to all these establishment people that have been around for so long. And you notice that a lot of these establishment people are a bunch of old windbags. They're baby boomers, for Christ's sake. They have a vested interest in making sure they prop this stupid Ponzi scheme along until they're no longer in this life so that they can in turn just leave it to you guys. And they didn't even properly educate you correctly so you can deal with this nonsense. They didn't even give you the tools necessary to navigate through life, for Christ's sake. A lot of you kids can't even support yourselves. You can't even go out on your own. You can't leave the nest. You can't balance your checkbook. You can't get any credit. You can't get a car. I mean, these are all problems, for Christ's sake, that are directly affecting you because of these goddamn baby boomers. I mean, do you understand the baby boomers back in the 70s and the late 60s these people could get a job, and even a part-time job, believe it or not. They could get a part-time job and make enough money to where they could live in a little shitty apartment. All right, but hey, they're out of mom and daddy's house, right? A little shitty apartment, some shitty little pinto, and could still afford to go to college. Oh, yeah. yeah you, you, can you do that today in a part-time job? Absolutely not. And let me tell you, if you increase the wages, you dumbasses, you are going to decrease the availability of potential jobs that you people have. All right? I mean, that's why people are concerned about automation. Well, obviously, you're not that concerned because you're more concerned about inflating minimum wages to the point where they're unbearable to any business, where it seems rather economically viable to invest in big machineries 
because it pays itself off in the long run, especially when not only do you have to pay an employee's wages, now because of this federally mandated health care, i.e. Obamacare, an employer has to pay a full-time employee's health benefits, and they have to pay for the freaking health insurance of these people. I mean, you take all those costs, it's no wonder why you have automation just kind of pushing itself through. I mean, haven't you noticed more and more automated systems, self-service systems, robotic systems? They're all coming about because I'm telling you, you people have been had, man. You freaking socialist kids and all you people that are leftists, you've been had, you've been bamboozled, you've been hoodwinked, for Christ's sake, and you need to realize and get into reality that what these baby boomers have done, and, and they've done it on the backs of liberalism, of leftism, of the idea of collectivism. This is why they passed all this nonsense. The whole great society, that's a freaking leftist idea. I mean, the whole idea of social welfare, it's a leftist idea. The whole concept of freaking uh, Social Security, it was freaking stupid FDR, freaking leftist idea. They're the ones that screwed us, for Christ's sake. And you keep running to the crap that has destroyed this country? That just goes to show you that that overinflated, overpriced freaking college education isn't teaching you dick. If you can't understand what's going on around you and see reality, you dumbasses. Jesus Christ. And let me tell you something. On top of this being an anti-Mother's Day edition of this broadcast, all right, this is also an anti-baby boomer edition of this broadcast. I spit on every one of you goddamn baby boomers out there that think you're so goddamn proud of yourself that you accomplished so much in life. I spit on you. I spit on you people. And you think what? Uh, look, I'm a capitalist. I can take care of myself until I'm 85, 90 years old. Do you understand that? I'll die working. I don't give a goddamn. I'm not some lazy prick, all right? But you pieces of garbage, you think, you know, because you know, this is how you constructed the system, didn't you, you dumb, ungrateful, baby boomer jerk dicks? You wanted to be able to, you know, I'm only going to work about 30, 35 years, and then I'm going to retire, and then when I retire, I'm going to collect my retirement, and then when I'm collecting my retirement, I'll go ahead and get another job and try to get another retirement there, and then you got two retirements, and then I get my Social Security. I mean, this is how they did it, folks. I'm serious. This is how they did it. This is why they have 80% of the uh, plus 80 per, plus percent of the goddamn wealth. All right? So that leaves 20% of whatever's wealth is left in this country for you to fend and try to gather. All right? Seriously. I mean I mean seriously, man. So I'm telling you generation Xers and you millennials, if you happen to have a parent who's a goddamn baby boomer and you're celebrating anything with them, they should be kissing your ass. To be honest with you, they should be shining your goddamn shoes because they shouldn't even be collecting what they're collecting as far as I'm concerned, folks. They've already pre-obligated those uh, unfunded liabilities a long time ago, all right? A long time ago, for Christ's sake. And look, people are saying, hey, you sound kind of old, ghost. Why are you even caring about this, for Christ's sake? Hey, I got a freaking soul, all right? I mean, you know, I, you know, one thing I do believe, even though I'm a badass and I, you know, I talk a lot of garbage, and you know, I'm a, I could consider myself an anti-hero. You know, I have a soul, man. I, I don't want to leave destruction. You know, when I leave the earth, I, I don't want to know that I left the earth with problems and you know, just disarray and you know, death or destruction or anything of that nature. For Christ's sake, man. I don't want to see these kids and leave this earth knowing that these kids are literally going to be royally screwed, and they don't even have the tools necessary to deal with the problems that are impending upon them. I'm serious. They do not have the tools necessary. I mean, these kids can barely they can barely wipe their own asses, I mean, for a lack of a better term, man. I mean, they can barely survive. They can barely get through a goddamn daily routine. They can barely communicate, for Christ's sake. So that's why I'm saying, man, they don't have the tools necessary that is going to be the impending danger that these damn baby boomers are going to leave. And I personally am calling on everybody who's a millennial, Generation Xer, Generation Wire, 
you people need to start gathering yourselves together and stop being such star fuckers and stop being so anesthetized with entertainment that who owns the entertainment industry? You guessed it, the baby boomers, all right? I mean, take a look at all the people that own these joints, all right? You people need to stop getting anesthetized with all this ridiculous Hollywood-based uh, you know, uh, pumped up entertainment nonsense, and you need to start getting together with your lives. You need to start doing something that's going to better yourself every day. Learn something new every day. You wake up, you go to sleep, you do that on a consistent basis. The least you could do is start learning something every day. If you don't learn something new every day, you have just wasted your pathetically anal life. And I'm talking about genuinely learn something. I'm not just talking about, oh, look, I know that episode of the Game of Thrones and that guy. <laughs> Nobody cares about that crap. Screw fiction. I hate fiction. It is the biggest waste of time, waste of energy, and waste of life as far as I'm concerned, fiction. I mean, you want to know why we had fiction books back in the day? Because there was no TV, all right? There was no internet. There was no phone. There was no other means of communication or entertainment, for Christ's sake. So what did you do? You'd grab a goddamn book, and if you knew how to read, you'd be humorous for about a, you know, an hour, two hours. I mean, hell, I mean, you had a lot of time on your hands back in the day, all right? I mean, time is money now, folks. Time is money. So for you to waste your life away on some fictitious crap is just a waste of life, in my opinion, all right? Now, I'm not trying to downplay liter literature or anything of that nature, but, I'm, I mean, if you want to be a successful capitalist, you need to cut out things that are wasting your life and your energy and your time, Seriously, I mean, you know, reading nonsense and wasting your time on nonsense that isn't making you any smarter, isn't making you any more efficient, isn't making you any richer, isn't making you any anything, isn't doing anything for you. You should just cut it out like a goddamn cancer is what I'm saying. He's going to cut it out, all right? I'm serious. And I think it was Dan Pena that said, and let me tell you something. If you don't know Dan Pena, I strongly advise you to to look up this guy. Uh, he's a great uh, a motivator as it relates to, uh, you know, getting people abreast with the corporate world and, uh, you know, how to get rich, basically. You know, he's a pretty good guy. I, li I like the guy. Uh, but Dan Pena said, show me your friends and I'll show you your future, okay? I mean, if you're around a bunch of losers, all right, if you're around a bunch of idiots and they're all doing nothing but wasting their lives, their energies, their efforts, for Christ's sake. Well, what the hell are you going to do in the future? You're going to do the same goddamn thing as these losers. All right? I mean, you need to gather yourself around people that are just as ambitious as you, if not more. All right? I mean, get with somebody that's a more ambitious. You know, associate yourself with them, for Christ's sake. Learn from people. Observe, for Christ's sake. You know, a lot of people walk through life like zombies. They're not even in. They're not even coherent of reality, for Christ's sake. You need to be uh, observant all the time. Look at people's actions, for Christ's sake. Look at their facial features. I mean, uh, listen to the cadence of their voice and all that crap. Jesus Christ. Anyway, Dan Pena. Dan Pena is. Uh, you know, somebody's asking me. Uh, Dan is D A N. Pena is a P E N A. Dan Pena. And that just goes to show you, too, the man is a Mexican, you know, so for all you La Raza, you need uh, assholes, and you, you know, oh, I mean, the Mexicans are being in there, this guy's almost, he's a billionaire Mexican. All right, he's a billionaire Mexican right here. How come, the, how come you Mexicans never talk about this guy? Huh? I hear you Latinos talking about Cesar Chavez, Cesar Chavez over here, you know, this stupid migrant freaking leftist communist organizer. I mean, they, they freaking rename streets all over freaking cities in Texas over this silly bastard, for Christ's sake. And all he did was freaking organize a bunch of grape pickers uh, to get a, I, I don't know, a freaking, just laborize them. You know, we, we want the work week, uh, uh, we want to do this, whatever, for Christ's sake. And, and look, okay, I'm not going to go all negative on Cesar Chavez. He was against illegal immigration, okay? Oh, oh is that a shock to you dumbasses in La Raza, you neither? Uh, you freaking, uh, uh, you, you, you Mexicans that are out here trying to rabble rouse with the Mexican flags, for Christ's sake. Yeah, Cesar Chavez was against illegal immigration. Why do you think he organized out there in California, for Christ's sake, assholes? 
He was against illegal immigration because the illegal immigrants were lowering the cost of wages for the freaking grape pickers out there. So that's why he unionized the domestic grape pickers so that they could force the freaking vineyards that, hey, you better not, we're going to go on strike and, you know, so on and so forth, and we're going to organize and we're going to do this. Don't take the illegal immigrants. Don't shortchange us on our pay. All that crap, you know, all that crap. But now all of a sudden, Cesar Chavez, who was a leftist communist back then, who was against illegal immigration, all of a sudden they'll use his image, they'll use his name, but they're not following his, they're not following his policies. They're not following his policies, for Christ's sake. So whenever you see these people with the Mexican flags, and, and just ask them, do you like Cesar Chavez? Yeah, I like Cesar Chavez, man. He's a good man. Yeah, he's Cesar Chavez, man. He's a good man. He's a good dude, man. Oh, yeah, you know he was against illegal immigration? Nah, man, you lying, man. You lying, dude. You lying. Shut up. Just shut up. Here, chew on a rubber tortilla and choke on it, you silly bastard. Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, before we move on to Radio Graffiti, I want to finish off with this. I am serious as a heart attack when I say that you people need to start standing up to the baby boomers. You need to start you know, scaring them a little bit. Because these people think that they're going to just go ahead and keep this whole Ponzi scheme going until they die off of this life. And they're just going to leave it to you. I mean, they don't care what happens. They don't care if it explodes. They don't care if they cause nuclear war. Uh, they don't care if they, they put the whole goddamn world in a, a Great Depression for 20 years. They don't care, all right? They're the most selfish, evil generation in world history, for Christ's sake, all right? And I think that the historical record books will show that. They are pieces of trash, all right? I mean, if you want to take a look at why they're pieces of trash, we'll take a look at everybody's little favorite Christmas movie come Christmas time called what? A Christmas Story. That's right. You want to know why these freaking baby boomers are such selfish assholes? Take a very good observant look at the movie A Christmas Story and take a look at Ralphie. Oh, Ralphie, for Christ's sake. You know, one scene that stands with me in that movie is when this little twerp and his friend, for Christ's sake, pressure his other friend to do that tongue thing on the pole during freezing weather, for Christ's sake, his tongue gets stuck. It, they all run away, for Christ's sake, and, uh, you know, him and his, and his friend are like, hey, you're just going to leave? And then Ralphie goes, but the bell rang! But the bell rang! I mean, that is the quintessential... Uh, that's the quintessential scene for what the baby boomers do and how they justify their evil. You understand that? They've been doing, they've been so pussy pampered and they've, they've had everything handed to them on a silver platter. That mentality, that scene in a Christmas story is literally a metaphor for why these baby boomers are such soulless assholes. They're like, well, Hey, the bell rang. I mean, what's my supposed to do? This poor bastard is stuck on a pole because of some garbage that you idiots did. And he's supposed to be your homie. He's supposed to be your friend, for Christ's sake. And all the power. And then that whole scene afterwards when, you know, the teacher is looking like, hey, what the hell? What the hell happened? And they just like, no big deal. I don't know who you're talking about. She knew who did it. But uh, they're, they're just acting like little, little cocky little piss ants, you know, looking around. Like, I don't know who you're talking. You're talking to me? I don't know who you're talking. I didn't do nothing. I mean, that is the baby boomer generation. That's how these baby boomers think, folks. All right? Selfish assholes all of them all right seriously and look if you're one of the uh you know supposed baby boomers that wasn't like this well you didn't do good enough of a job did you for christ's sake because all the problems that we have right now it's your fault all right anyway let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get to radio graffiti shall we all right, folks, seriously. As a matter of fact, before I do that, let me go ahead and take a swig of this beer. I want to keep chugging beers, for Christ's sake. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Anyway, folks, we are going to start Radio Graffiti on this anti-Mother's Day edition of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. But before we do, I'd like for everybody to please... Bookmark the official website of the True Capitalist Radio Broadcast. It is blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That is blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. All right, we broadcast Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. 
So let everybody know. Put it on your reminders. Put it on your little checklist. Put whatever you need to do to remind you that we broadcast Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, baby, all right? And spread around like wildfire that we are in effect and in the house, all right? And moreover, if you haven't already done so, please follow me on Twitter, folks, all right? The Twitter name to follow is Politics Ghost. All one word, no underscores, Politics Ghost. Anyway, folks, let's go ahead and get to Radio Graffiti right now. All right, folks, let's go ahead and start it from the top. How about 831 Radio Graffiti? Hello, Ghost Kermit the Frog here with a quick question. Is it true that the real reason you don't like Mother's Day is because your mother never loved you to begin with? No, don't, that's not true at all, for Christ's sake. I don't like Mother's Day because of the product of what has happened to this country, all right there, Kermit? You're just mad because Miss Piggy is doing Gonzo's nose, for Christ's sake, and loves it. You silly little stupid fruity ass frog. Anyway, Mr. Sev, Radio Graffiti. I am your host, the Talk to Fake Ghost. This is from Anime Radio once again. And you talk shit on anime. Suck a penis, you fruity ass. Hello, 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 fruity ass. Shove it up your ass. Shove it up your ass with that anime splice, for Christ's sake. I'm t- I don't care what you idiots try to do. I hate anime. I hate anime! You son of a bitch. Anyway, we got simple a- uh, Simply X, Radio Graffiti. Yo, Ghost, wonder if you had time to do a quick capitalist confession real quick. Uh, we're not doing capitalist confessions right now. Renegade Supreme, Radio Graffiti. I mean, you see what I'm saying? I mean, this is funny. I'm serious, but I'm getting a little about all this rain in Texas. It's funny. God damn it, you son of a... Look, it's not funny, all right? All the rain that's happening in Texas is not funny, you sons of bitches. Enough of the freaking flood trolls. Enough of the freaking rain trolls, all right? This is serious, man. This rain out here in Texas is serious, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. Good Lord, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, you see what I have to put up with here, folks? The Thai Fruit Dragon, Radio Graffiti. Fruity-ass frog. Fruity-ass frog. Fruity ass frog, fruity ass frog, fruity ass frog. What the, what, what the, I just said that for Christ's sake like literally freaking 15 seconds ago. Jesus Christ, I mean look at all these splices, I mean what the, good God. I just said that man. I just freaking said that for Christ's sake man. Jesus Christ, Bill, 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 Radio Graffiti. I just freaking said that. 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 All right, look, 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 all right, that's about enough of this crap, right? This is becoming all freaky, for Christ's sake, man. Jesus Christ, this is internet butt stalker esque. If you want my personal opinion, for Christ's sake. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, I just said that, for Christ's sake. Y'all just heard that. I just said that. I just freaking said that! Oh my god, Jesus Christ, man. Let me take a swig of beer after. I mean, are you hearing this, folks? Are you hearing this? Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, uh, radio graffiti is happening, and I, I forgot to describe it for all the folks that don't know what's going on. This is a part of the broadcast where the spectators become a part of the spectacle. All you have to do is give me a call right now at 516-453-9903. When I call on your Skype name or on your area code, you have exactly three to four seconds to say whatever it is that's on your mind, for Christ's sake. Uh, and look, there's a lot of people that like to do, like, little splices of my voice and stuff. But, I mean, they're just doing it. I mean, I, I just said that like 15 minutes, 15 seconds ago. I mean, I just said that. Jesus Christ, man. Let me go. Do we, do we have some more callers, engineer, other than those freaking internet butt stalkers, for Christ's sake? <laughs> All right. How about money in the face? Radio graffiti. They just said that. 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 All right. That, 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 Enough of that 
crap. Enough of that crap already, for Christ's sake, man. Jesus Christ. These people are literally taking what I'm saying within seconds. They're taking it within seconds after I say it, for Christ's sake, and splicing it. I mean, good God. Oh, Jesus Christ. What kind of internet butt stock control terrorist cyber vermin crap is this? Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. I mean, are y'all hearing this, folks? Are you hearing this? Jesus Christ. Pisses me off, for Christ's sake, man. Are you screening these callers, engineer, for Christ's sake? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. You know what? G give, give me the mic. Give me the mic. Give me the mic. Jesus Christ. Give me the mic, for Christ's sake. Oh, my God. What in the blue hell is I have no idea what's going on here, folks. I'm sorry. We're trying to conduct a radio graffiti here, and we got a goddamn internet butt stalker going on. <sighs> Jesus Christ, what the hell is this? All right, let's keep it going, all right? Uh, you remember, 516-453-9903, and when I call on your Skype name or on your area code, you have exactly three to four seconds to say whatever the hell you want to say. Let's keep, let's keep it going, shall we? Pivot idiot, radio graffiti. I'm just, I'm serious, I'm not pranking you, but I really want to sword fight with you, you know? Oh, je Jesus Christ, then, then there's this guy, then this guy comes along, that's the internet butt stalker, that's the internet butt <laughs> Jesus Christ, I hate Mother's Day! Jesus! Jesus Christ, do you hear what's going on here, folks, for Christ's sake? Let me tell you something about that scumbag that just called up, all right? Jesus Christ. When I used to broadcast, all right, that son of a bitch called for every single broadcast that I ever did for two years, that son of a bitch internet butt stalker. Every goddamn day, every day, every day. You son of a bitch. Oh, you sorry sacks of crap. Oh, my God. Give me the mic. Give me the mic. Give me the mic. Freaking mic, for Christ's sake. Look, this isn't a very good radio graffiti, you scumbags. And you know who I blame? I blame the mothers. I blame Mother's Day. I blame the single mothers. I blame the lesbianic feminists. And I blame the baby boomers for all this cyber vermin and this goddamn cruel terrorist crap. Uh, uh, Jesus Christ, I better calm down for Christ's sake. A uh, real black guy, radio graffiti. Jesus Christ. Little ghost was got no reason. Little shop I've got no reason to live. Teeny tiny twerp, rest in short hand, shorter than a smurf, a midget minivan. He's little bar with little matter fuss. He likes to take a bunch of dicks up the side of his butt. Always tweeting all them itty bitty lies. Sucking all them dicks of so big black sweaty guys. So I don't want no short midget. He takes bubble bath in a bibbit. He's too short to call a bigot. He's weak. He needs a bubble. Alright, get that, get that sick ass off. Get off of Chris. Kill! Kill! Get Scumbags! Scumbags, man! I mean, you know. I don't even need to be here. Do you scumbags understand that? I don't even need to be here. I could be on 6th Street right now. I could be off my balcony right now. It, it could be millitime. It could be millitime. It could be millitime right now. Instead of messing around with you freaks. Jesus Christ. Give me the mic. Give me the mic. Give me the mic. Give me the goddamn mic, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Sonic lover, radio graffiti. Jesus Christ. 
Christ. Hello? Yeah, uh, you're taking. Yeah, well, you're taking too long, you stupid milky liquor. 786, Radio Graffiti. Hola, Ghost. Is a Mexican fruit? My burro. Yeah, well, you got, you, you, got, you got cut off because, you, you know, you don't, your cricket wireless sucks. Uh, Exara Hawks, Radio Graffiti. True capitalist penis in the house. Uh, Tango whiskey, radio graffiti. Well, my true opinion on that scumbag Donald Trump is that uh, he is no uh, Shut guy. up! Shut up! Just shut your stupid stinking hole. Uh, 716, radio graffiti. Internet butt stalker asks. Internet butt stalker asks. Internet butt stalker asks. Internet butt stalker asks. Internet. Jesus Christ! For Christ's sake, Jesus Christ. I mean, are you hearing this? I mean, it's like a horror movie here. It's a horror show. Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, Jesus Christ, Radio Graffiti. Here's that song. This guy's obsessed with his penis, for Christ's sake. Make it songs about it. Jesus Christ. Who else do we got going on over here? Uh, 423, Radio Graffiti. Gutless Ghost, the true capitalist coward host of No Balls Radio. You better show up to the Highland Park Methodist Church in Dallas. God, shut up, shut up. I don't want to beat up your old man. As a matter of fact, your old man's or your old grandfather's probably using that for book plug. So you can sell his stupid fake book. In my opinion, who else do we got? Five seven five radio graffiti. Hey, ghost. Uh, book suggestion: Winning Through Intimidation. Robert Ringer is the author. Oh, uh, hey, that's that's pretty good, man. Thanks a lot. Seven eight one radio graffiti. Ghost, I have to poop so bad. Can I use your mouth as a toilet? Ah, uh, you sick son of a bitch. Seven one two radio graffiti. Hey, ghost. Just turned twenty one. I just bought a bottle of John Michael Blue. Am I taking the mayor real quick? Uh, I have no idea. You talk too damn fast there, and uh, I ain't got much time. College liberal, Radio Graffiti. Wait a minute. Hold it, you dummies. I'd like to talk today about He's a pussy. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. Two days- uh, get the hell out Get that crap out of here. Get that splice out of here. Uh, Mango Frisky, Radio Graffiti. I mean, we should be spitting on Donald Trump, far as I'm concerned, because he was a closet. Now, shut up! Shut up with that splice! Don't besmirch Donald Trump, you scumbags! 425, Radio Graffiti. I just want to say fuck all the ghetto whores of the world. Welfare should be capped to two kids, but God bless all the real mothers who work and are married. Thanks, Ghost, for the broadcast. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for those words. Uh, 831, Radio Graffiti. Hello, Ghost. Jeremy D. Frog here with some great news. Due to Houston being flooded, the Muppets Corporation bought the entire city of Houston and... It's- shut up, Kermit! Just shut your stupid, stupid frog face! All right? Just shut your stupid, froggy-looking face, all right? You stupid son of a bitch. Anyway, folks, we're about almost over with the anti-Mother's Day edition of the broadcast. But we are going to extend uh, this broadcast an hour, and the only way you're going to be able to listen to it is if you call right now, 516-453-9903, or you can listen to it on the podcast 
at blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. You can listen to it there right after we stop this uh, post post-show edition is what we like to call it here on the True Capitalist Radio Broadcast. And the reason I do this, folks, is so that individuals that view the podcast or listen to the podcast because they're at work or they can't listen to us live, we want to give them a little treat so they can listen to that's exclusive for the podcast listeners. So this is for you, folks. Anyway, follow me on Twitter, folks. Politics Ghost is the name to follow. All one word. No underscores, folks. Politics Ghost. All right, and moreover, folks, uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, s- send me a tweet if necessary. Let me know what you're thinking, for Christ's sake. All right? Anyway, we will be back tomorrow, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. We broadcast Monday through Friday, folks. Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Now what we're going to do is we're about to basically cut off from the live feed here, and we're going to, you know, post show edition of the True Capitalist Radio Broadcast For the podcast listeners, I want to thank you for tuning in with me. Make sure to tune in with me tomorrow and every Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, the True Capitalist Radio Broadcast. Thank you very much for tuning in with me. Long live the Capitalist Army, baby! Geico presents sharing versus oversharing. Today, Bridget Griffin shared a video of her daily yoga routine, two self-help articles, and her new blog called Build Your Inner Bridge with Bridge. Girl, your sharing is turned into oversharing. No worries, Bridge. Geico has some info worth sharing with your seven blog followers, like how you could save money on your car insurance, update your policy, and report a claim just by visiting geico.com. How's that for building your inner bridge? Bridge, Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. All right, folks, we are now off the air as it relates to broadcasting on the Internet. Uh, but we are uh, live on those that are actually listening, all right, that are actually listening via the phone. And uh, what I'd like for everybody to do right now is to go ahead and get, continue with the radio graffiti mode. But before I do that, folks, i gotta, I got to get another beer here. I mean, seriously, I mean, just... I mean, you heard what I had to discuss today. I mean, it was just a very hard subject matter that, uh, you know, is really, really uh, troubling to discuss, to say the goddamn least, all right? I mean, mean, do you hear this? I mean, this is a a ball of information that I exuded on the Internet, for Christ's sake, as it relates to the goddamn feminists and the baby boomers and and all these other scumbags, for Christ's sake. And, of course, the anti-Mother's Day edition stuff. So I'm telling you, folks, uh, oh, Jesus Christ, it's just, it's, it was just a lot today to say the goddamn least, all right? To say the goddamn least. Oh, Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, I want to thank you for tuning in with me on this post-show edition of the True Capitalist Radio Show. I am your host, the man they call Ghost, and once again, if you haven't already done so, God damn it, follow me on Twitter, Politics Ghost is the name to follow, all right? Let me go ahead and chug the rest of this beer so I can be a little bit more mellow on this post-show anti-Mother's Day edition. Let me go ahead and take a swig of this. Oh. <laughs> Woo! I'm telling you, every time I drink uh, this goddamn beer, man, I just remember my old man, <sighs> tough son of a bitch, Probably why I am the man I am today. I mean, believe me, he was a tough bastard, man. Tough guy. Uh, never, like I said, I never really saw him go to sleep. I saw him passing out. Uh, very tough son of a bitch. Didn't take no crap from nobody. Straight up. Bad, bad MF. Ugh. Telling you, it's just a nostalgic taste, that, oh, that the the highlight. The Miller time, baby, the Miller time. Here, let's crack open another one here. Oh, Jesus Christ. That got on the mic, man. Testing, testing. Are we, are we here? I think I got a whole, a whole crap load full of beer on the damn mic, for Christ's sake. You're pouring that crap in there here, folks. And then we're going to go ahead and move on with some post-show radio graffiti, for Christ's sake. And we're only going to do a few of them here, folks, so that... Uh, I can continue to consume my alcoholic bre- beverages, excuse me, and be able to, you know, maybe have an evening with the wife, so on and so forth. So, um, 
Let's go ahead and continue with Radio Graffiti right now. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, let's take on uh, the People's Republic of China, Radio Graffiti. Oompa Loompa Boy, very cute face. He deep throat a goy until he's blue face. Oh, I'm not saying he'd put a single drop to ways. He'd touch you both for the taste. Oh, he goes up like an itty bitty shrimp and prays for the man mayonnaise. Jesus Christ! I mean, well, uh, I mean, literally. How much, how much time, effort, and energy did you put into that freak, ridiculous, sick ass song, asshole? Seriously. Jesus Christ, who else do we got? We got 646 Radio Graffiti. I'm Davey, I'm not a target, I actually want to do it. I'm Davey, I'm not a target, I actually want to do it. I'm Davey, I'm not a target, I actually want to do it. I'm Davey, I'm not a target. I actually wanna do it. I'm Davey, I'm not a target. God damn it with that crap, enough of that crap. Not in the post-show Radio Graffiti. Do you understand that? We're not doing that in the post-show Radio Graffiti. God, stop that crap. Stop that stupid crap. That's internet butt stalker crap using the internet butt stalker. Jesus Christ, what kind of a mind warp is that? This asshole is using internet butt stalking tactics utilizing the internet butt stalker. Jesus Christ, try to wrap your head around that one for a little bit. Jesus Christ. You see what I got to put up with for Christ's sake? And what, you want me to be a YouTuber for Christ's sake and what, have like millions of assholes? That are just completely mindless like this coming at me for Christ's sake. I mean, this is internet butt stalker tactics user. The internet butt stalker. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, let's just go back to. Look, before I do that, let me have a freaking drink. Give me a drink. Good Lord. Ugh. Uh, I don't. I don't know what the hell's going on here, folks. I really don't know what the hell's going on. Anyway, let's continue going, shall we? Uh, William Shank, Radio Graffiti. It's my dick. It's my dick. Let me open up my throat. Reach my dick. Reach my dick. On the shores of Tripoli. Fill my dick. Fill my dick. Let me crash upon your shore. Reach my dick. Reach my dick. about his penis. Can somebody explain that? How many songs does this guy have singing about his goddamn penis? This guy's got a problem, man. He's got a serious goddamn problem. Good God. 781 Radio Graffiti. Oh, oh Jesus Christ. What, what, what the hell are you doing? You're sticking the goddamn phone up an ass or something? What the hell is that about? 423 Radio Graffiti. Ghosts to want to thank you for finally growing up here and exposing the truth about the world. Baby boomers is a code word for the Jewish Rothschild Zionists. Fuck Jewish control Google and YouTube, Facebook, and the lame stream. Uh, uh, all right, all right, we get it. All right, all right, all right. Uh, Cosmo Brockington, Radio Graffiti. One of your mothers was just killed in a car accident. <sighs> Who wants to guess whose mother it was for a sucker? Huh? You kids need a hint? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. She'd been drinking. Oh, 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 who said it first? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's horrible. That's horrible. That's horrible, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. 786 Radio Graffiti. Uh, I, I don't fucking like you, stupid fat American. Fuck you, capitalist motherfucker. Yeah, right. You sound like a freaking white dude trying to sound like something ethnic. I don't know what kind of ethnicity you're trying there, but it, it's it's a major fail. Major fail, ass clown. All right, Jesus Christ. Who else do we got here? We got uh, Mr. Positivity, Radio Graffiti. Well, my true opinion on Adolf Hitler is that uh, he is no different, in my personal opinion, than that scumbag Donald Trump. Uh, now, was he a... Uh, shut up! Shut up! I didn't say that to the splice. I never said that, for Christ's sake, man. Enough. Do not besmirch Donald Trump's name. Do you understand that? Do not besmirch his name. I'm warning you. I'm warning all of you. 
574 Radio Graffiti. I am going to get the digital age. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. That's a dumbass, sick ass splice for Christ's sake. Son of a bitch, man. You guys are sons of bitches, man. Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't even know if I want to continue. This is just getting sicker and sicker, man. Anyway, we got Sonic Lover, Radio Graffiti. So sorry. I actually thought I didn't even realize, but I actually want to talk to you about the wildfires and how we can't really uh, take it any more of it. No one deserves it. I bet you guys don't deserve to rain down there, do you? Like, I don't think you do. Um, pray for Canada and always keep the show going. I hope to be an active caller. Hey, I appreciate it. And yes, uh, even though I think Canada is a pimple on the ass of America, they do not deserve uh, those uh, blazing inferno wildfires at all. They do not deserve that. Uh, even though they have maple leaves up their asses and uh, are always talking garbage about us, uh, they still don't. They, they don't deserve that. Anyway, uh, nasty amid radio graffiti. You know what I'm saying? Who cares what your kids are doing, for Christ's sake, right? Let's just throw them in front of a wheelchair. <laughs> uh, you son of a bitch. Enough with the cripple jokes, man. I mean, how long are y'all going to keep that troll going, for Christ's sake, man? I am not a cripple. Jesus Christ. And if I was, so what? You're still listening. Hanaway 31, Radio Graffiti. Yeah, we got a Helen Keller deaf mute, for Christ's sake. Uh, who else do we got? We got uh, Jonas, Radio Graffiti. Oh, Jesus Christ. What, is everybody Helen Keller deaf mute? Are we out of freaking call? Are we out of callers here, Engineer? Well, Jesus Christ, I don't know. I guess everybody's just calling up to listen, for Christ's sake. We'll take a couple more callers, but if we don't have any more, I'm out of here, baby. You understand that? I mean, you think I want to sit here and play with my pecker shaft uh, on a damn anti-Mother's Day edition? I don't even like this holiday, folks. This holiday sucks, all right? It's not even a real holiday. It's nothing more to induce you people into consuming, all right? Now, which I'm not completely against. But the premise of it, to put, you know, a mother or a father on some kind of a goddamn pedestal, for Christ's sake, when they're doing what they're supposed to do, and the majority of these people are not, and they still want to get rewarded for it, for Christ's sake. Now, look, I'm going to be completely honest with you folks, all right, and this is what our America has turned out to be, you know. People want kudos for nothing, all right. I'm serious. People want kudos for the most slightest uh, achievement for Christ's sake. Do you understand that your life continues after that one achievement? And your life is the culmination of achievements, all right? Pat yourself on the back for about a minute and then move forward. Do you understand that? Life is a process, not a journey, all right? That's what Dan Pena says, for Christ's sake. I've been, I've been watching this stuff as of late. The guy's a pretty good motivator. I mean, you know, he kind of reminds me of me, if you want my personal opinion. You know what I'm saying? He kind of reminds me of me. No, no BS. You know what I'm saying? Stop crying. Get up. You're poor because you're lazy, you know, that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I kind of like the man. You know what I mean? He lives in a castle, for Christ's sake. All right? I literally lives in a castle in Scotland. You know, a sharp fucking dresser. Excuse my French. All right? I'm telling you, that's where I'm headed. All right? I'm telling you here in the next... I, I, look, I'm actually prepared for the next crash. I'm actually waiting for the next crash. All right? I mean, I have enough uh, l liquid... And it doesn't necessarily mean American dollars. Here's a bunch of liquid, liquid and a liquidatable type of assets so that I can go and get ready to go right into the goddamn market when it crashes again. All right? I'm serious. When it goes back to, and crashes, folks, I'm telling you, that's what you need to be working on right now as a capitalist. You need to make as much money as possible, uh, put it in assets that can be liquidated very easily, all right, and then once that stock market crashes, for Christ's sake, by God, start buying. All right? And just like when I told you folks when I started True Capitalist Radio, when I converted it from True Conservative Radio to True Capitalist Radio, the Dow Jones Industrials was like 7,000, 8,000 points, man. The highest it's been, it's been 18,000 and change. 
Okay, just imagine if you would have just value invested. And what I mean by value investing means whatever money you can salvage at the end of the month after your expenses and you, and you, and you want to save, instead of saving, well, I, don't, I wouldn't suggest doing that now, but uh, back when uh, I started True Capitalist Radio, if you would have just value invested, and let's just say you only had 200 bucks a month. All right, every time you had that 200 bucks a month, you'd buy whatever share of whatever blue chip stock, however many shares you can. And you valued, invested, and just kept that every two every month. You get 200 bucks a month of a blue chip stock, and blue chip stocks, for, folks, are any stock in the Dow Jones Industrials. There's only like 30 something companies in the Dow Jones Industrial, folks. Believe it or not, I mean that that index and that you know, 18,000, 17,000 composite. I mean that is of the 30 something companies that are on the Dow Jones Industrial. So that's why I'm suggesting you folks. Get yourself prepared, because, look, I believe that they're going to save the economy one more time. They could still do it, in my opinion. I, and I know people are getting shocked about Donald Trump, uh, about how Donald Trump is, uh, you know, talking about renegotiating the debt. Hey, look, what nobody's talking about is the fact that I believe that not only can he refinance the debt, but get better negotiation. I don't think that he's going to nego renegotiate the debt in regards to uh, anybody taking a cut uh, as it relates to holding the actual uh, bonds. I think that uh, there, there's enough people in the sphere of influence of Donald Trump to be able to find enough bondholders and enough capital to obtain this, to be able to refinance our debt, for Christ's sake, man. And you see, what Trump is going to do is he's going to say, look, we want to buy back the stock, or excuse me, buy back the bonds right away, we're not going to give you 100 cents on the dollar because we're ca we're we're going ahead and we're pulling those you know we're buying those bonds back but we're going to pay you this amount for that buyback. And uh you know if they don't want to sell well then they got to obligate themselves to be long-term investors into a longer bond uh you know the, the same bond uh time period as what's going to be renegotiated in the refinance. All right, now I know this is getting a little complicated for folks, but that's what Trump is thinking. That's one option. You know, remember, there's a bunch of options in finance. All right, seriously. But I believe that what Trump is doing, and, and look, I'm not saying this because, I, well, let's just put it this way. I know how Trump is thinking, all right? And I believe that that's what he's suggesting as it relates to refinancing the debt. I mean, this man has enough sphere of influence to be able to call everybody he knows throughout the world and say, look, now that I'm president, you know me, all right, I, I need some money to refinance the country, all right? And look, he doesn't even need the whole $20 trillion. I mean, all he needs to do is, is get about 5 maybe $10 trillion, uh, refinanced at a longer-term debt, term debt, or whatever the terms might be, for Christ's sake. I mean, Donald Trump can do this, folks. We need to do something because what we need to do with the tax, the tax dollars that we're going to generate, and let me explain what, where the money's going to come from, okay? Now, Donald Trump is going to charge tariffs because, let me tell you, the Chinese, the Japanese, and everybody else charges tariffs on us. We're the only idiots that allow uh, them to, uh, you know, go ahead and bring in their damn goods in America, and we consume them, and they keep the goddamn majority of the profits made out here. All right? But on top of that, the, the tariffs, uh, Donald Trump is going to make the $1.25 trillion that is being held offshore. Because, folks, I've, I, I mean, just look this up for yourself. There's $1.25 trillion offshore that American companies, multinational American companies have made in other markets, but they can't bring into the country because then they would have to be taxed an extra 40 to 50 percent on profits that had already been taxed in the country of origin where it was made. And Donald Trump understands that. He's going to bring that tax down so that that goddamn $1.25 trillion comes back into the country Moreover, he's going to incentivize corporations to build capital goods. Now, if you economics majors know, you know what capital goods means. It means uh, investing in machines, invest, investing in labor, and, and investing in production materials, that, so on and so forth, folks. And uh, what Donald Trump is going to do is he's going to bring back some level of production base 
in America by incentivizing the, uh, the, the corporations and the small businesses, especially, folks. And let me, I'll get to small businesses in a second. But he's going to incentivize corporations to invest profits uh, based on, a, I'm sure, a tax loophole or something of that nature so that they can invest in capital goods. And, uh, he, and he may even drop capital gains tax to zero up to about – Two hundred fifty, five hundred thousand, a million bucks. If you're going to reinvest the the, the capital gains into goods uh, or, or, or capital investment, capital goods, capital growth, you know, investing in new machinery, new labor, you know, there's a whole bunch of methods that can be used by Donald Trump here that he knows. He's a businessman. He knows. He's going to make this economy so great, folks. And let me tell you, even if these international bureaucracies the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, even if they try to throw everything in the kitchen sink at America to try to destroy us, we still have the American way that we love, that we want to fight for. We, we want to fight for freedom. We want to fight for economic prosperity, and that's what Donald Trump's going to do. We are going to produce products that are going to be produced on the world market again. And you want to know why? Because we're going to make them better. We're going to make them more innovative. You know, we're going to take pride in our work, for Christ's sake, because, look, you folks have already witnessed what it's like not to have work and be dependent on a goddamn welfare system to be dependent on a government, for Christ's sake. It's not good. It's better to have economic opportunity so that you can carve your own destiny in life, so you can do what you want to do based upon your labor, your ability, your creativity, your prowess. I mean, and that's what capitalism is all about. I'm not talking about these, this monopolized merging of corporations and governments. Or I'm talking about capitalism. I'm talking about private enterprise and small business taking control of this economy. Now, you heard Trump talk about how wages were rather low, okay? And, of course, that's got all these leftists happy in the pants, uh, Trump talking about low wages. Well, the reason he's talking about them, folks, is because there's no jobs out here and the reason there's no jobs out here is because most of the jobs are corporate, and those corporations have merged with our government. They're the ones that get the no-bid contracts. They're the ones that get the specialized tax breaks that are available to them and nobody else. All right? I mean, and they're the ones that, you know, get the, you know, land deals and, you know, uh, breaks on local municipal taxes and all this crap. All right? They're the only ones that are supplying wages in America, and... Folks, because there's no other competition in the labor market, they can give you whatever you want. Do you understand that there is no competition in the labor market? Now, what screwed the labor market up? This asshole that's president today. Everything that he has done has crippled the American economy. All right, And the only people that have made money, folks, is, look, that's why – why did I tell you when I started this broadcast, why did I tell you to start investing in the stock market? All right? Because I knew that's where the money was going to be, assholes, all right? I knew it. I mean, you know, they're going to – I mean, you could just see it through the political process, man. When they were bailing out Wall Street, you knew it, for Christ's sake, man. If you had any sense to yourself, if you had been listening to this broadcast, I knew it. Because, folks, this government is going to continuously print out money. It's been printing out money for a long, long time, all right? A long time. And unfortunately, that money is going somewhere. Where is all that money going? Well, look at all these bubbles that are happening. Look at all the stock market. I mean, I mean, it's finally starting to chop itself down. Look at the housing bubble, for Christ's sake. That's where all this printed money is being held in. Do you understand this, right? And that's why it's not going to you. Now, what Donald Trump, let me get back to Trump and wages. The reason that he's talking about wages, folks, is because there's no small business anymore. I mean, do you understand? That's what supplies the good long-term employment, you know, uh, is, is small business. I mean, I, I, I remember there still are businesses like this. Unfortunately, they're in the service industry because uh, nobody's producing anything anymore because we've been outbid by slave labor in China and Mexico. So it financially incentivizes anybody with the means of production to move them to those markets, all right, and, and manufacture out of there. 
But uh, these service industry-based businesses, folks, I mean, you have long-term employment. I mean, you have, like, employees that are so happy with their job. They love coming to work every day. They love supporting the family that has supported them with their labor and so on and so forth. That They're at, like, jobs for, like, 30 years, 40 years with the same family. You know, the, the same operation, the same small business. And they wouldn't be just there if, they, if, if the small business wasn't paying them properly. You know, I mean, you know, uh, when it comes to small businesses, I mean, I know that there's, you know, uh, exceptions to every rule. I know there's bad apples everywhere, folks. But for the most part, uh, you know, people that are successful are going to pay their employees back. That's why whenever you hear about these, like, Christmas bonuses and, and, oh, you know, this Christmas this company gave their all their employees, like, five grand, two grand, whatever the case might be, it's small businesses that turn midsize or big. I mean, that's small business-minded. They care about the people that, that brought them there. You know, they're not a, a slime bag corporation that could care less because no one, it, it, no one really has any self-interest in a corporation outside of the numbers. It's pure numbers game in corporations because they have to show stockholders that, hey, look, you see, we're still profitable, and it doesn't matter how they're profitable. And I've told you this time and time again. I used uh, J.C. Penney as an example of how at one point J.C. Penney's stock in 19, I forgot, in the mid-90s sometime, was $75 a goddamn share. I mean, they were a big, huge conglomerate. Uh, in my personal opinion, the only reason I know about this, folks, I've been investing in stocks for a long time, and you know, I held that stock for a little bit. Uh, anyway, uh, there, there were $72, and then, you know, I mean, and I, and I shop there, too. I used to shop there. They used to have all kinds of stuff. Now it's all crap. Now it's all, like, I, I don't even shop there anymore, for Christ's sake, because it's all clothing that is just garbage. It's just garbage there now, man. But at, at the time, they used to have all kinds of stuff. They used, to, they used to sell appliances. They used to sell electronics. They used to have all kinds of nice services, for Christ's sake. They used to have this package pickup. I mean, seriously, that's why I shop there. They had a lot of great services. They, got a lot, they had a lot of good stuff. Well, folks, uh, as a result, okay, they bought uh, this uh, one pharmacist, uh, this one pharmacy called Eckert. All right, believe it or not, they actually bought Eckert, okay? And why they bought Eckert, I have no idea. I mean, your, your freaking clothing, uh, appliance, uh, uh, housewares type of retail location, and you decide to take the profits that you made from that to purchase Eckert pharmacies? Uh, and really, that's what drug them down, folks. And uh, instead of actually selling that goddamn Eckerd Pharmacies, what the corporates did in this company, and the only reason I know this, folks, is because, like I said, I sold off the shares at about 70. I, I knew it was going to be uh, uh, it was going to be a long downfall for this company, but I cashed out at about seventy dollars, sixty nine dollars, some, somewhere around there. I can't recollect. Uh, but it was up to 70, mid 70s, uh, you know, when it finally started collapsing. And the reason it collapsed, folks, is because the corporates, the assholes running the company, decided to start cutting everything. I mean, I saw it as a customer. You know, I saw it as a customer. They started cutting package pickup department. They started cutting. Uh, I remember I used to go into a damn J.C. Penney, and they had a goddamn cashier at every department, even if not two of them. You know what I mean? I mean? That was one of the more convenient uh, stores to go into where you didn't have to wait in line. They cut those idiots off. Uh, now uh, they got people waiting in line like a goddamn uh, lab rats, you know? Uh, they, they downgraded on the quality of merchandise. They took out certain departments. I mean, they just, they just cut and cut and cut. Now, why did they cut, folks? Because they don't care. The corporates, they're just there to collect their job. They want to continue to show that they're profitable you know, based on cooking the books, based on cooking the numbers, so that the shareholders can be okay to justify their goddamn pay. I mean, all these corporate CEOs, all these people that are in corporate America, they're contracted, all right? So uh, they want to continue to sustain that contract work, if not uh, when they fulfill the contract, sign it for even more money. They could care less about whether or not the corporation is going to sustain itself. They could care less of whether or not they got to cut jobs and people got to get fired or whatever the case might be. And that's why I just read yesterday that J.C. Penney, even though they got recapitalized 
after, uh, you know, basically, I think they, if I'm not mistaken, they may have filed for bankruptcy, I think about four or five years ago, I believe it was. If not, they had, a, they had to renegotiate their debt terms, something of that nature. And they needed more capital. You know, no one would finance them more capital to sustain themselves. Somebody did. And for that little time that they uh, got recapitalized, uh, you know, they, they saw a little bump in their stock, in, in, their, in their stock price. Well, folks, uh, that recapitalization is all pissed away. It's gone. And as a result, you know, uh, J.C. Penney looks like it's finally going to go out of business. And, folks, that's what happens to corporations. All right? I mean, literally, the guys up top, they're trying to justify their fat, in, their, their fat paychecks. And you see, that's why Donald Trump was talking about wages not going up. They're not going up based upon the amount of economic opportunity, employment opportunity in the labor market. And Donald Trump's not an idiot, man. He knows that the small business, and if you give small business incentives, and look, I don't know if he's doing this, but I personally believe that there needs to be tax-free for up to a certain amount, like a uh, you know, in Romney's tax plan in 2012, even though this guy's a scumbag, bureaucratic son of a bitch now, one thing that I did like is that he wanted everybody, you know, that made under, you know, a certain amount of capital, uh, or actually, I, th- I think it was like over, if you made under 300 grand, you could uh, actually have, you could make $250,000 in capital gains and pay no taxes. I mean, do you understand what that would do? I mean, uh, capital gains, folks, is like uh, typical to what you gain in the stock market. For instance, if uh, I buy a share for ten bucks, it went to twenty bucks, and I sell the share for twenty bucks, I made ten bucks on each share that I bought for ten bucks. That's a capital gain, and there's something called a capital gains tax. And right now, capital gains tax is like you know forty something percent, forty five percent. Uh, depending on, you know, what write-offs you can do. I mean, it's pretty high at this point in time. And that's why nobody's really making too many capital gains as far as individuals are concerned. Everybody who's making capital gains is on the corporate level because they have all the lawyers and the tax people to be able to write all that crap off so they don't have to pay anything on it. But I like that, and I think that uh, Donald Trump is probably going to utilize a mechanism similar to that so that small businesses and budding entrepreneurs – can go out and expand the economy. I mean, he I already tweeted an uh, interview where he suggested that uh, America needs to open up its uh, itself to new capitalists. That's exactly what he said. And that's why I'm telling you this is a capitalist revolution, folks. And when I put out this book next month, all right, I mean, this is not for uh, a capitalist that knows what they're doing, not for a capitalist that knows the market, so on and so forth. This is for people that have no idea how to be a capitalist, no skill set, no tools, mental tools necessary to be able to put themselves on a track to be a successful capitalist, folks. Because I'm telling you right now, if Donald Trump is elected, when he's elected, this man is going to spawn the capitalist revolution like we have never seen before. And there's going to be so many opportunities for individuals that want to be entrepreneurs, that want to make capital gains, that want to make their own independent money for them to do so because the tax burden is going to be less. The regulations are going to be less. I mean, there's going to be less government, for Christ's sake. It's going to be beautiful, all right? And moreover, we're going to have to start manufacturing goods if we are going to renegotiate these trade deals. And I'm telling you, those tariffs – uh, they're going to bring down the cost of the debt, okay? Moreover, uh, we're going to renegotiate wherever our bases are so that some of these countries could start paying us for protecting them. That's going to bring down our debt, for Christ's sake, all right? He's going to start cutting bureaucracy like it's nobody's business, and I cannot wait, folks. It'll be a great day, a great goddamn day in American history when all these goddamn bureaucrats are on the unemployment line and have to witness what they were looking at and laughing at and pointing at and basically dictating during the Obama administration. It'll be a great day when those damn bureaucrats are on the unemployment line, boy. But I'm telling you, folks, I'm not joking. I believe Donald Trump is the real deal, all right? And I think that he's going to get things done. And I believe that when I was talking about earlier, the 80s, I think he's going to bring back the 80s and then some, all right? I think he's going to bring back the 80s 
times 20, in my personal opinion. All right, and he's got the financial abilities to do so. He understands economics. He knows what he's doing, all right? And that's why I'm suggesting you once again, all right, it's going to crash again. But they're going to bail out the government. It's, the whole crap that happened in 2009 is going to happen again, okay? But this is the very last time that it's going to be able to happen unless we start paying down our debt, man. And I believe that Donald Trump has the financial know-how to be able to understand how to pay down this debt. And I think that he has enough capital that he can raise in his sphere of influence to be able to buy back a lot of these bonds at a new rate, uh, you know, at a, whether it's uh, long-term for lower interest, short-term for higher interest, whatever the case might be. And uh, what he's going to have as priority when he's president is utilizing our tax dollars to pay down the principal more than we're actually paying on the goddamn interest. Because, folks, what we're collecting in taxes can barely pay off the interest on the damn debt that we have now. So once we start paying on the interest on that debt, or excuse me, once we start paying on the principal, which is the actual money owed, not the goddamn interest, then we can start cracking down on that debt very, very easily. And as the debt starts going down, our dollar, our economy... You know, I mean, things start, uh, you know, uh, getting a little bit more uh, 80s-esque, for a lack of a better euphemism, for a lack of a better metaphor. And let me tell you something else I think Donald Trump's going to do. And I don't have any – well, I'm just going to tell you my opinion, all right? On top of his sphere, sphere of influence of fat cats – that you know that will buy these bonds. I think that he's going to utilize the old trick back in World War II, and he's going to utilize you know government mechanisms to advertise to the people and say, "Hey, look, you buy government bonds. You own a piece of this government." I'm serious, folks. I honestly believe that uh, once this man takes office, he's going to utilize this strategy on top of his fear of influence of raising capital. So, I mean, if he can raise, you know so much capital to refinance some of the debt, and then finds capital amidst the American people who are willing to, you know, it doesn't matter how many bonds American people get. You know what I mean? There's 300, what is it, 350, 365 million people in this country, something of that nature. I mean, you know, I'm telling you this right now, folks. I mean, we can do this, man. We can pay off this debt. We can get ourselves out of financial apparel, for Christ's sake. We just have to do it. We have to be smart about it. We got to elect good leaders. We got to let the capitalists take control of this government. I'm telling you this, folks. I'm not kidding around. I honestly believe that on top of Donald Trump gathering a lot of his uh, fat cat capitalists to try to refinance his debt, he's going to appeal to general American people. And he's going to suggest you buy the bonds, go out and own a piece of this government, legitimately own it. I mean, Who do you think that we're paying the debt off to? Everybody who bought bonds. Everybody who bought United States bonds. That's who owns the country. That's why you've got Saudi Arabia threatening to sell $750 billion billion worth of bonds, which would basically turn us into a Great Depression because they're going to cash out. They're going to be like a... $750 $750 billion, you want to sell them, and there's not anybody that's going to buy $750 billion. There's nobody on the market that's just going to gather those up at face value. It's going to crash the goddamn price of the bond, for Christ's sake. I mean, that's what kind of influence and economic warfare that other foreign governments have on our system. I mean, that's why this bureaucracy that's in power today wants to internationalize. That's why they don't care about America. I mean, John Kerry, our goddamn Secretary of State, did you hear this scumbag at some goddamn college commencement address? This son of a bitch actually said that you need to prepare yourselves for a borderless world. Uh, What did I tell you about these leftist scumbags, man? They're bureaucratic nutjobs, man. Their own objective, their whole life is based on obtaining bureaucratic power. And once they've obtained as much bureaucratic power that one can sustain on the national level, where are they to go? They're going to go on the international stage. And that's why each and every one of these leftists always promote international institutionalization, bureaucracy. 
That's why they have signed us to dumbass agreements that we don't even read, like TTP, uh, TPP, TPIP, NAFTA. This is why they're doing this, folks. This is why Donald Trump's election is so important. This is a capitalist revolution, and we've got to take control of this country. Do you understand this, folks? We, the capitalists, have to take control of this country and run it the way it's supposed to be so that everybody has economic opportunity, not handouts, boy. And not to mention, folks, if, and I believe he may do it, Donald Trump appeals to the people of America and say, hey, look, buy American bonds, own a piece of America. I believe that people will be patriotic and actually go out and attempt, even if they can only afford one bond, man. They are owning a piece of America, so they're no longer at the whim of foreign investors who hold the American debt. You understand that? This is a capitalist revolution, and it's being sparked by Donald Trump, folks. And this is why I'm telling you, whatever you're doing this general election, you must do whatever is necessary within your sphere of influence to basically persuade people to go out and vote for Donald Trump. All right? That's why I implore everybody to get a blog. If you don't like blogging, get uh, do something on video. Do some audio. Do some memes, for Christ's sake. I mean, you know, go out and spread news stories, all right? Uh, go out on social media, talk in forum posts, whatever it takes, folks, so that we can perpetuate the idea that Donald Trump not only must be president, but he's our last line in the sand for America to be anything that it was. We are a dying nation. We need to go and, and pick ourselves up out of the dirt and make sure that we can be the bastion of capitalism that we were once. Do you understand that? And that's why the capitalist must take control of this government, and that's why I have come back, folks. That's why I'm back on the air, because we need the capitalist to take control. We've already taken control of the GOP. The GOP belongs to us, the capitalists. They are bowing down, each and every one of them. Did you hear John McCain today? We must back Donald Trump. All right, the party must back Donald Trump. Now he's backing Donald Trump. That's what I thought, John Turncoat McCain. Bow down, boy. Spit on that shoe, boy. Spit on that shoe. <sighs> That's right, folks. We're winning, but we need your energy. You understand that? We need you to make memes. We need you to go out there and make videos. We need you to do whatever it takes to perpetuate the information, to put it in the faces of the most simplistic idiots that don't understand. That information has to be in their face so that they don't deny the fact that what's going on on the left is nothing more than the destruction of America and the increase of international bureaucracy. And they have no intention of solving any debt problems. They have no intention of helping the poor. They have no intention of helping America. They have every intention of helping themselves and their bureaucratic power. And the sooner that we can get a lot of these leftists to understand that, the better. Or anybody, anybody who's even on the fence, for Christ's sake, I want to make sure that Donald Trump is elected president. I mean, it's a must. It is a must. If you're a capitalist, you need to do your duty and get off the sidelines and get on the front lines and make sure, make sure that this man is elected president, all right? It's a capitalist revolution, for Christ's sake. Do your part. This is our time now. This is the capitalist time. You saw how we took control of the GOP. We're going to take control of this whole goddamn government, and we're going to we're going to take control of it right. We're going to run it the way it should be, in the hands of the capitalists. In the hands of the goddamn capitalists. Anyway, folks, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get on this soliloquy about this stuff. I definitely want to thank everybody for tuning in with me on this anti-Mother's Day edition of the True Capitalist Radio Show. Once again, I am going to be on tomorrow, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, and of course every Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard American Time. Make sure to you know bookmark the page, blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. And make sure to check every, every time at around 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, see if we're on, and just go ahead and click and listen to a live show with us, for Christ's sake, all right? Listen to it on your phone. Put a little Bluetooth piece in your ear. Whatever. 
I'm serious, folks. And spread it around like wildfire that true capitalist radio is in effect and in the house. God damn, man. I t- this is a capitalist revolution. I can feel it. Can you feel it? I can feel this capitalist revolution, man. I'm excited. I'm so optimistic. I've never been so optimistic in my life. I mean, this is a great time to be alive, folks. Great time to be alive. And let me tell you something. These idiots aren't going to go out, don't go, excuse me, they're not going to go down lightly. You understand? They're not going to go down quietly. So we got to continue to do what we're doing, all right? That's why I'm calling all the capitalists. we got to do what we need to do. All right? Don't just sit there. Get off the sidelines and get on the front lines, man. Help us out out here, for Christ's sake. Make sure Trump is elected, baby, so we can make America great again. And believe me, this man is going to do it. And when he lets in the capitalists and the capitalists take control of this country, we are going to make it great again. You understand that? We, us, the capitalists. Because the power should belong to us, not some stupid, dumbass bureaucrat that's never worked a day in his life. Not some disgusting, filthy, soulless bureaucrat that's selling us out right from underneath our noses. Not some soulless, disgusting bureaucrat that's taken all kinds of millions of dollars from corporations that the government has merged with. It's a freaking Ponzi scheme, assholes. You get it? They give these corporations, these big, no big, billion, million dollar contracts, for Christ's sake, those same corporations give that same money to these damn politicians that signed off on that son of a bitch. Do you get the Ponzi scheme now, folks? Do you understand why Donald Trump's election is so crucial? It's a destruction of the goddamn corrupt political system that must be destroyed? That's why I'm telling you, folks, get off the goddamn sidelines and get on the front lines, for Christ's sake. All right? Make sure to let everybody know that Donald Trump must be president. I mean, make propaganda, memes, blogs, videos, whatever. Do it. God damn it. Do it. Do it. Because if you don't, then you're consenting to the destruction of America. If you just sit there and are silent, you are consenting to the destruction of America. Anyway, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. I'm going to get the hell out of here, for Christ's sake. I, I'd like to say this is a decent post-Mother's Day edition. This is a decent Mother's Day edition of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast, all right? All right, once again, Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, baby, all right? Make sure to tell you everybody about the True Capitalist Radio show. And uh, I'm out of here, folks. I want to thank you for tuning in with me. Follow me on Twitter, Politics Ghost, all one word, no underscores, Politics Ghost. All right? I want to thank you for tuning in with me on this anti-Mother's Day edition, this random Sunday edition of the True Capitalist Radio Show. Long live the capitalist army and death the feminism, death the socialism and communism, and death, death, death the totalitarianism. I'm out of here, boy. <laughs> Woo! That isn't just the sound of the all-new 2016 Mercedes-Benz GLC being put through its paces. It's the sound of innovation. The innovation behind one of the most advanced SUVs on the road today. With multiple driving modes, a suite of intelligent drive systems, and a technology-filled cabin that sets new standards in modern luxury. This is what innovation sounds like. Now, discover what it feels like in a 2016 Mercedes-Benz GLC. Some equipment described as optional.